So in the next few hours, you are going to see how to become more efficient in whatever you do. This is a quick introduction of what I do. I have no qualification in IT. I started learning it in 86 as a hobby. And by the time I became a gynecologist, I was already doing freelance programming. So I just continued it. It was a stupid thing to do because in 91, when I started my business, there was no field called IT. Never mind. Now, next one. This whole thing is about efficiency. So let's take an example. How do I know the number of people I have coached? Because I have an Excel file which has three columns. Customer name, country, city and number of people. Now if I have to show you a summary of where I have gone and how many people I have coached. All of you use Excel, right? So I have raw data. I want to summarize it. What should I use? A pivot table. Now, pivot table is easy to do, but if you copy paste a long pivot table, it may not fit on PowerPoint. That's a practical problem. All of us find different workarounds. The most popular workaround is convert that to an image and then make multiple copies of the image and crop different pieces so that it shows something like this. That's not a very good idea because although technically I have summarized and shown the report, it's difficult to read, difficult to make sense because this is geographical information. Right? Bangladesh is not near Hong Kong, definitely not near Hungary. So, all this is fulfillment. Someone asked for a report, I made it, but is it the best way to show locational information? No. What is the best way? Because it's location specific, it should be a map. So, let me show you a different way of showing the same data on a map. So this is a map. I can play the map. So this is exactly the same information being shown in a 3D animated map. Now the data is still in Excel. The question is, which software I must be using to convert that simple data into a 3D animated map? And of course, then convert it to a video because I am running this as a video. Now you may be surprised to know that the answer is not Google. It's not After Effects. It's not any special tool. The answer is Excel. So I'm sure all of you use Excel. You go there every day. I am sure you have gone to insert menu also every day. But there is a button there which has been there since 2013 which nobody noticed. The button is looking at you but you are not looking at the button. That is called inefficiency. Now depending on the version of Excel you have, you may or may not have it. If you have an older version, there is an add-in called Power Map which you can install later. We will cover that later. Bottom line. You had the need, you had the solution in front of you, but you never met each other. That is called inefficiency. Now, I'm sure all of you want to grow, right? Everyone wants to grow in life. Now, how do you grow? Let's switch it to an HR angle now. So, if you want to grow, what do you do? There are many ways of managing that situation and many ways of handling your career but let's make it generic enough so that anybody can understand now all of you have a job description or jd i'm going to show you a sample job description this is for a sales role it doesn't matter this is just a representative list now how often do we look at the JD. Of course, at the time of joining and leaving, yes, but in between, do we look at it often or infrequently? The typical answer is during appraisal or review. So I'm going to do a quick simulated review. Let's say I'm sitting with my boss. This is what I had promised as a part of JD. Now we are going to check. Is this done? Yes. Is this done? No. This is partially done. This one is not done. Something like that. 
so never mind how many reviews you have conducted or appeared for one thing is certain any review everything which you have promised in the jd never gets fully delivered there is always something missing to what extent you have not fulfilled the jd let's leave that aside but almost 100% of times it is not full execution of what was in the jd now remember we want to grow if you deliver less than jd obviously there is not going to be any growth now suppose miraculously somehow you delivered everything which you have mentioned and promised in the jd will that lead to growth no because what you have promised you have delivered what's the big deal so that will lead to sustenance nobody will kick you out but that's not by itself going to lead to growth in fact too much of sustenance leads to stagnation also never mind now we know for sure that if you exceed jd there is a very high chance that you will grow nothing complicated this is common sense now the problem is we are somewhere here we are not able to deliver what we have promised and our ambition is to be here this gap is called work inefficiency now why does this happen i know i should deliver something more than what i have promised why am i not able to even deliver what i have promised now let's be clear i am assuming that you have all this in spite of having expertise experience everything still you are not able to deliver why there must be something missing so what is in short supply what do you not have what will enable you to deliver what you really can and obviously the universal answer is shortage of time now unfortunately however wealthy you are you can't purchase time right so what do we do now at this stage let me tell you how we use our time every day we go to office and work now there are two types of work we do let me just show it to you graphically types of work two types means what i am not talking about from a domain perspective i am just talking about broad categorization of work so two types very simple structured and unstructured structured means processes or work which is well defined unstructured means you have to do it but it's not clearly spelled out so this is core work which we do hr finance marketing sales it whatever and this in spite of what you do you still spend at least 50% of your time on word excel powerpoint outlook and so on this is the unstructured part now let's see how we manage both parts the core or structured work is 50% office is 50% okay now the core work is critical to our business everyone knows that so we have for the structured work as far as possible we automate it so it becomes person independent and more accurate and faster if it does require human intervention then every process is very well thought out and standardized someone is cross checking whether you are following those standards audit audits are done and in spite of all this we don't keep quiet we continuously improve the processes call it business process reengineering whether it is on shop floor or within office this happens continuously now compare this with what we do related to office office work i mean word excel powerpoint outlook related work it's equally important because 50% of your life is being spent on those tools the problem is we could not automate it if it was possible it would have got automated long back it has to be done manually but there is no standardization nobody is cross checking is the process we are following is optimal or is wasting time nobody is auditing the way in which we are using office and there is no improvement whatsoever thought of continuous or otherwise in short what is happening it's all ad hoc and as long as the work is getting done nobody cares how it is being done that's the situation with office this part is called inefficiency we have to first start noticing it so with that little digression let's come back to our original thought process so what you need to understand is this 
whether you like it or not fyi what does that mean fyi means yes i'm not asking you i'm telling you that you are inefficient absolutely inefficient when it comes to office only don't take it personally i'm not doubting your domain knowledge your experience your expertise all that is good but because we have never focused on using office efficiently you're not going to get efficiency for free without effort you don't get quality now why am i saying fortunately because if you had not seen this session you wouldn't even know that you are inefficient if you ask anybody do you use office yes do you know how to use it yes everyone has a false sense of adequacy maybe we think there is little bit of inefficiency but that's not really worrisome nobody is focusing on it so the first step of problem solving is to notice the problem you are fortunate enough to notice the problem and of course by the end of the session you will also know how to solve the problem so what are you going to get at the end of this session obviously we are using office in a non optimal manner what does that mean if you take 2 hours to do it and 18 steps to get something done probably it was possible to be done in 1 minute so you are obviously going to save time at least 20 minutes of time saving if not more now it's not only time wastage if you are not careful especially in case of excel lot of errors can creep in and nobody may even detect those errors so that will reduced and how to do our work is very important we'll come back to it very very shortly and you will understand how to execute work faster we spend a lot of time analyzing data you will know how to do it better even better than what you are doing today and obviously it is going to lead to growth so now let's come back to our question i have my jd i want to exceed my jd but i am not able to because of shortage of time so obviously what should we do whatever time we have we must use it intelligently now i have just told you that you are inefficient but obviously you don't have to take my word for it in the next few minutes i'll prove it to you i can use any product to prove it let's start with outlook now whatever time i have i need to use it well and not just deliver the jd but do something more okay that's the theory in practice what do we do every day you come to office the first application opened on a laptop or a desktop is outlook everywhere in the world now what do we do when you go to outlook first thing is you will go to inbox and then you will go to calendar okay now what do you do in inbox now remember you are going to focus on executing your work which is defined by your jd so ideally i should be spending all my time doing my work now you are not a one person show one man or one woman show you are working in a company so obviously it is practically impossible for you to do all your work you will need help from someone so if you need help from someone one of the common methods is to send a mail and request whatever you want so if you send a mail you are doing your work but you also have to reply to mails when you reply to mails whose work is happening this is your work this is others work now you can't say i won't reply because then people won't reply to your mails but what you need to understand is what is the proportion how many mails you send versus how many mails you reply to that is against you so more time you are spending helping others at the cost of your own work that doesn't sound right and exactly the same problem happens with meetings now i'm not going to read it out you understand the concept the exact percentage doesn't matter but it's always unfavorable to you now noticing that is the first step towards understanding the inefficiency now just noticing is not enough you have to act on it so what is the primary problem here if you are able to manage your work and you had spare time and you help others that's fine but if you are helping others and in the process your work is getting stuck or delayed and you are not able to deliver that is absolutely inefficient so now i need to manage my work properly now the question is if i have to execute my work properly i should list it somewhere 
so question is where is the list of your pending work and when this question is asked there is not a single answer because we tend to keep a list of our work in many many different places of course lot of it is in the mind itself now remember job description or jd is not a list of pending work jd contains high level objectives we break them down and then execute the work okay fair enough now if i ask you where is the list it's in multiple places so i have just tried to list common places where people keep their work now one or more of these are used by everyone now remember work is important that's why you get your salary that's how you are going to manage your life and career now that critical aspect called getting the work done not a single company has a standard operating procedure so lack of standardization leads to variability and variability means poor quality so now wherever the list is it is scattered all over the place okay now i still have to do the work whether it is written in mind or email or palm of my hand wherever now when do we do our work we need time and time is blocked in calendar meetings so typically we end up doing our own work in these blank areas and hope that nobody calls you for a meeting here so let's take an example i came out of this meeting i want to go into this meeting i have half an hour now i have to quickly decide what is the best use of my half an hour that's a very good thought but problem is the list of pending work is scattered all over the place how will you quickly sort filter prioritize practically impossible now you have to think which one of these sources can i go to very quickly no it's not laptop it's not mobile it is called mind yes so now if you try to go to other places and search half an hour will be wasted in finding the right task so fastest is mind now what does that mean let me summarize and actually highlight the inefficiency of our life we want to deliver deliver jd plus more yes we have shortage of time we must use that time smartly all this is good now when it comes to actually deciding what do i do in this time slot unfortunately we do whatever comes to our mind that is called inefficiency think about it and you'll realize how unstructured our most critical part of life is now obviously this is called inefficiency now this is a problem to solve a problem what is the root cause the root cause is the work itself is scattered that's why it is difficult to make sense out of it understood so what do we do logically what is the solution solution is very simple we must put all the work in one place simple common sense now the question is what is that place and the answer is surprisingly simple it is right there in outlook for last 20 years it's called the tasks folder so bottom line wherever the task originates whether it's on paper verbal whatsapp doesn't matter make a master list and that you should do in the tasks folder so let me show you where is the task folder probably you already know it but still so this is calendar sorry this is inbox this is calendar contacts and tasks sometimes you can't see it because this area is too small so if that is the case expand this thing and then you will see the task folder now unfortunately what happens when you click on the task folder it does not repeat it does not show the task folder it shows you a to do list now where did this list come from this list is a result of our unstructured bad habit what do we do one of the places where we keep our tasks is in inbox because some people delegate work to you as a mail and then you realize it is work and then you flag it now when you go to this to do list it is actually a list of mails which you have flagged that is not the real task list the real task list is the second one maybe you have never gone there you click on it for the first time maybe it's empty doesn't matter now look at the screen carefully and tell me if you want to add a task what is the best way 
look at the screen look at the menus all that. obviously the answer looks like it is clicking on this button called new task but no remember when it comes to office there is a very simple fundamental rule which almost sounds funny but it's actually true the first thought which comes to your mind is always inefficient why am i saying it because remember we are adding the task here not for the first time maybe you already have it in whatsapp or a notepad or a minutes of meeting we are doing extra work to add a task here because we want to create a master list but because it's a duplicate activity in most cases you don't want to waste too much time doing it so if you click on this it will ask you many things and confuse you so a better way of adding tasks quickly is here click here to add tasks this is very simple i just type the task i put some deadline and that's it so this is the fastest way of adding tasks that's the easiest thing to do so bottom line make a habit to create a master task list here remember personal professional work should all go here all your work should go here time is time now in order to help yourself in filtering categorizing prioritizing all that you can use many methods one of the simplest one is categories so don't right click on the category itself right click in the column called categories and you will see multiple categories if you have never used categories it will show you six of them and they will be called green category yellow category something like that the idea is first time you use it you should go to all categories choose a particular color rename it and define your own category there are 25 colors to choose from you don't have to use all 25 but at least broadly you classify your work so for example if i am a salesperson i'll probably have my leads marked as sales so now if i only half an hour and i want to use that intelligently what will i do i would like to focus on sales so of course i can filter it how do you filter it you go to search tasks when you click on search tasks what happens a search toolbar will come in that there are categories and you can say sales so it will only give you sales category simple and effective now once you create a category that color coding can be used anywhere so i can use this also as a sales related meeting or i can flag a mail with that particular category so this is a recruitment related mail for example okay got the idea now what did we do we actually created a task list very nice and we will monitor that task list now you have to remember that your work is going to happen here and that is the most important thing in life so you have to change your behavior from now onwards now suppose i have a task on 28th of the month the next question you will ask me is do i get a reminder the answer is no you do not get a reminder but then you will say when i have a meeting meeting does give me a reminder by default it is zero minutes you can open this and you will see that in this by default depends on your default but generally it is 15 minutes or zero minutes so reminder comes by default for meetings but reminder does not come by default for tasks so I open a task there is a feature called reminder but it is off by default now you'll be in a hurry and say no problem if it's same not enabled i will enable it that is not the way to do things you have to start thinking not doing you have to think microsoft enabled reminder by default for calendar and microsoft disabled reminders by default for tasks why did they do it did they do it by mistake or did they do it to trouble me no there must be a very solid reason they took that decision so you have to find the logic behind it so what is the logic yes i want to be reminded to do this work agreed but do i really want to be reminded on the last day no now of course i can go to reminder and i can choose a earlier day where i actually plan to do this work now what happens when a reminder comes the reminder comes in a list a dialog box saying reminder most commonly what do we do we dismiss it now suppose you dismiss it 
and you forgot about it. That reminder has very limited value. So that is why by default for tasks, reminders are not enabled. So leave it alone. We don't want to be reminded at the last moment. I'll tell you how to manage the situation. First understand step one, make a comprehensive master task list. Done. Now the next step is to execute this work. Do this work. That is not going to do it by itself. Now to do any work, I need to block time. If I don't block time, what will happen? The tasks will come, tasks will go, they will just stay there. The red task means delayed. More and more tasks will get delayed. Why? Because I have a busy calendar. I don't have time to do my work. Now this is a demo, so this is not a real life calendar. In real life calendars will be busy. So now if you want to really ensure that you actually end up doing your work before time, you need to block time for it. Now in order to block time, I need to see calendar. When I am seeing calendar, I cannot see the task folder. When I am seeing the task folder, I can't see calendar. I need to see both. So this is how you do it. First go to calendar, make sure it is full screen. Then don't click on the task folder, right click on it and say open in new window. Now this window is again full screen, but it's a separate window. So now what do you do? Make this window as small as possible. Just close unwanted stuff. Now what happens? You can see the tasks in one part of the window and you can see the calendar in other part of the window. Just arrange it like this. Now remember when you arrange a window like this, next time you open Outlook, it's going to remember this and it is going to automatically open both windows. Never mind. So now I can see the pending work and I can see available time. So now you can put two and two together. So I say I will do this on this day just before lunch, whatever it is. By default, it is half an hour. Of course, you can adjust the time based on what you think. Now, if you try to do it for this week, probably it's too late. So try arranging some time for yourself to manage your work in the next week. As you get habituated to this, you'll have more and more control and you can do it more proactively rather than reactively. Now, when I add this as a calendar request, yes, you will get a reminder for it because it's a calendar request. So that is how you get best of both worlds. Now, this is not just a reminder. If you had enabled reminder in task, there also you would have got a reminder. But that reminder is transient. It goes away. This calendar entry will remain and hopefully you will remember to do it. Now, when you finally finish the task, you still have to go to the task folder and mark it as complete. Just because you planned it for Friday, Friday came and went, that doesn't mean the task is complete. Task has to be marked as complete manually, explicitly. So, what did we learn so far? In order to manage our work, two-step process. What is a two-step process? First step is to, first step is to create a master list of tasks, monitor it regularly. And second step is to find time to do the work. Now, this sounds like this. What am I saying really? I am saying I am doing an appointment with myself to do my own work. That does sound funny, but it's not funny. This in real sense is time management. So start using it and start becoming efficient. Now, when you use Outlook, where do we normally go? I just mentioned that earlier. First, we go to inbox, go to calendar. Now, don't you think we should go and add one more item to this? Of course, you should ask tasks. Now, is that the correct order? In inbox, my work happens, others work happen. My work, others work. Here, 100% my work. So, this is the level of priority. Now, how often do you go to task folder? Don't put a reminder to go to task folder. That is your life. So, you go there as frequently as you go to inbox. And life will be better. So, that is quickly about task folder. Now, while we are on Outlook, do you understand how inefficient our usage of Outlook was? And here, whatever I have shown you by and large is independent of the product you use. The same inefficiency exists 
on any email platform whether it is lotus notes or gmail doesn't really matter is the immaturity of thought process which led to this inefficiency now a simple thing like search is also inefficient let me quickly show this and then we'll move to another topic so what happens in search very simple we go to search and type something that is the worst way of using search because you generally get too many results and it is confusing so why is it the worst way of doing it not because i am saying remember when you are working on the office you have to start noticing things first thing to notice is this is called a menu right all of us know this is called a menu right everyone knows this is menu this is the full version of the menu now by default the last menu item is help okay now keep looking there when i click inside the search another menu gets added this is a context sensitive menu so it is trying to tell you please look at me first before you type anything in simple words now why should we look at it because most commonly the scope of search is the full mailbox that is a bad idea now ideally it should change it to current folder centrally but if it is not done what happens is whatever you type here it's searching all over the place so you get too many results and most commonly when we are searching in inbox we are implicitly searching in inbox only that's what you think but actually it is searching across the mailbox so first is to define scope then you have to think do i remember whatever i am searching for approximately when did the mail arrive you don't know the exact date that's okay but at least something like this you may remember do you remember did it have an attachment maybe you remember that then you say oh yeah that had an attachment something like that now very important to understand when you type something here where does outlook search in a given mail it search in from to cc not bcc in the subject in the body text and in the attachments so just one word it has to look at six places for every mail so that's why it takes little time and too many results come so in order to reduce the number of results and increase the precision of searching the best way is to refine the search so think whatever i am searching for was it in the subject then first click on the word subject then type the word okay it was not in subject it was in body text oh then where is body text there is nothing so now when you can't find something you have two options give up or explore a uh, more means explore but actually that doesn't sound like that now our mind says more means more trouble don't go there that's not true more means more features that means more benefits so you ask for it so don't worry and don't press escape just look at the list read all of them maybe we are looking for only one particular item right now called body but now that you have come and we rarely explore in such a manner might as well look at all of them so at least you know in future you can search explicitly only inside an attachment now what does this mean when there is a scroll bar you should scroll that's another simple way of learning so in this case i chose body text and then i type whatever i want to search for now what happened earlier i had got 27 results now i got 6 results so the more you refine the better will be the accuracy and precision of search and less number of results now so you say i don't remember whether it was in subject or body i don't remember approximately when it came if you don't remember anything what are you searching for if you are searching for something other than the word you will remember something so use that knowledge to refine the search that is the correct way of using search efficiently okay now before we leave outlook one small thing you notice that i am seeing here two time zones by default we see only one if you work across countries it is important to see the other countries time so that you can manage appointments and time scheduling accordingly so how do we go about doing this i have already configured it but suppose you want to know how to configure it one is to go to google last people 
go to hell but those methods don't work the simplest method is to go to the correct place and right click right click gives you all the answers you can even imagine so right click is an answer to a question what can i do here so remember this is the menu when i right click here if i right click on the calendar itself the menu is different if i right click on the upper menu the menu is different so that's a context sensitive menu so when i right click here it is telling you what you can do here so now if you look at all the options you can go to change time zone by default there is one you can add one more and choose the time zone you can add a third one choose the time zone so up to three time zones can be shown together now learning how to have three time zones is a minor part of learning the biggest learning is when in doubt right click most probably you will find the answer very very quickly now when you right click remember to look at all the other options even if you found the answer for example if you look at this carefully most of them are self explanatory there is one thing which is not very easy to understand what is that i have a 5 minute time slot okay so one hour gets divided into 5 5 minute slots very good now i have a 6 minute slot also why would anyone need 6 minute slot when there is already a 5 minute slot that is how you have to learn now you can say i don't care microsoft had nothing else to do so they put 6 minute slot randomly unfortunately software is not developed random if microsoft put a feature there that means there is a need for a 6 minute slot so someone somewhere in the world desperately needs a 6 minute slot and for those people 5 minute slot is not suitable so think which kind of people will find 6 minute slot suitable one hour has 60 minutes by the way so the answer is people charged by the hour sometimes on a per hour basis so if i have to do fractional billing it is much simpler to have 10 slots so whatever is my hourly rate just gets divided by 10 instead of dividing it by 12 if it was a 5 minute slot so those people like lawyers consultants who charge by the hour always use 6 minute slots for convenience of billing again that's a minor thing to learn the bigger thing is every feature has a need behind it so what is efficiency efficiency is to understand that all these features are actually delivering some solution the solutions you can see but you don't know the need then you are going to miss it now just to put this in the right context let me show you this is one feature this is another feature like that if you actually count the number of features which we have how many are we talking about so let me just quickly digress and show you that part so what do i mean if you actually count the number of features available like this 1 2 3 4 across word excel powerpoint outlook all of them how many are we talking about so this is one half of the menu like that many menus right click options tools options functions in excel all of them put together what do you think is the number take a guess unfortunately difficult you don't need to know the answer so let me show you the answer the total number is 12657 now how do i know this number because i have actually counted this is my blog on that blog there is an article how many features does office have and i have actually counted this is a old article one year old probably as of today but this number has already grown to 13000 now mind this is general knowledge for you office has so many features not a very useful piece of information now let me go ahead and ask you a more relevant question how many features do you think you use maybe you are not counted but to it a mental calculation and think so whatever number is is 100 150 something like that that's a very sad number now how many do we not use obviously this minus this so if you look at the pie chart it looks like this we have potentially all this but we are using a small fraction of it 
obviously the cost benefit ratio is going to be pathetic this is called return on ignorance by the way the black thing is the ignorance now at least these 150 we are using properly no even that is bad we are misusing them to the fullest extent pitiable misuse so underuse plus misuse is called inefficiency now this is not not used these are not known not use means what i know about it i don't need it i don't use it that's absolutely fine this is not known what does not known mean the fact that you don't know the features you know so it's active ignorance you are knowledgeable about your ignorance you know about it we still don't use it that's a psychological problem so when originally microsoft office looked like this the older version some of you may not have seen it but never mind whichever version you take there are a lot of buttons we don't like it because we don't use all of them every day we know we are not using all of them it's just increasing visual clutter microsoft doesn't stop adding buttons it is troubling my eyes so i have to find a solution what is the simplest way to find the solution very simple stop looking at them that we have done long back in school college itself this happened so i can only physically or consciously notice the buttons which i know about all others don't exist for me in psychology this is called inattentional blindness if you don't pay attention to something practically it doesn't exist for you this is how we are using office now when you get an upgrade something should upgrade that means your efficiency should go up that doesn't happen because the menus themselves change and then you are struggling to find the old buttons in the new version which is pathetic eventually you will find those but obviously you have no inclination or interest in looking at the rest let microsoft add as many buttons as it adds i am not going to look at them that is the thought process now what we have to understand each button is a solution that solution was created because someone had a need that need could be yours so behind every button we have to discover our need once you discover the need then it's your choice do you really need it use it otherwise let it be on the back burner if and when the need arises you can figure it out and use it so that's how this is done so now let's finish outlook and go to the next topic called inefficiency in excel all right so let's start with excel data analytics and power bi of course now before we do that let's understand what we typically do in excel first thing is we get data from somewhere and then of course we want to analyze it but it's not that simple in between there is a step involved what is that typically the data may have all the information but it may not be in the right format so we need to do some cleanup obviously from a business point of view analysis is more important unfortunately we end up spending more time doing cleanup than in analysis itself that is called inefficiency i'm not going to talk too much about cleanup but logically if you want to be efficient you should spend least amount of time in cleanup there are many many different ways in excel to do better faster smarter cleanup but that's a topic for another day let me show you a simple but very powerful technique of data cleanup look at what we have here we have data in one column ideally it should have been in three columns somehow i got it like this now if i want to split it into three columns i am sure you know how to do it we go to data text to columns choose some delimiter in this case the delimiter is space so i say space and then say finish unfortunately it is not finished you are finished because somewhere there are two spaces then it splits into extra columns that's not a good idea now this is all excel offers so now we have to waste time ambitious intelligent domain experts are wasting time doing like this f2 space bar control v tab right arrow shift right arrow control x left arrow control v <sighs> that was one row i have to do 700 more i may get salary to do that but is it really worth my time and brain so this is a classic example of noticing inefficiency you have to think who purchased whom did i purchase excel or excel purchase me 
if I purchased Excel, Excel should be helping me. I should not be helping Excel. So that means my method is inefficient. That's a simple way to detect inefficiency. Now mind, I detected inefficiency. Now how do I find the solution? Let me tell you how easy it is. I just give one example of what I want. So what have I done? This was the input. This was the ex this is the expected output. Now you ask Excel to help you by looking at the example you have given and figure out what to do. So you click on a magic button and it does the job. Let me show you again. What do I want here? 45 magic button. What is that magic button? It's just one millimeter away from text to columns, but nobody looked at it. It's there since 2013. So what does this mean? You give an example, Excel will figure it out. I can show you more detailed example of it, but let me also show you that sometimes it doesn't work. For example, in this case, I want whatever is in the brackets, but for that the pattern has to be clear. There is no bracket here. There is a hyphen. So the pattern is not clear. So now if I give FT as an example and click on flash fill, it will not behave the way you want it. Because Excel is thinking I just want the uppercase characters. That's why it is doing something like this. So it made a mistake here. Don't get discouraged. Go to the mistake and you correct it. Now notice Excel highlighted the region. So basically it is telling you, you correct my mistake. I will think again and reapply my mind. And now it is done. So sometimes one sample is enough, sometimes two examples and so on. This is a very simple but very powerful way of cleaning up data. There are many other ways, but I don't have time to show you in this session. But just check in your data menu. Earlier we used to have get external data. Now, if you have the new version of Excel, this should have changed to get and transform data. Either it is in first place or second place, doesn't matter. This is really, really powerful method of importing data from all kinds of places and cleaning them up very quickly. You can go to my blog or YouTube channel and you will see a lot of examples of this. Now, let's come back to our thought process. What does Excel typically contain? So, when it comes to analyzing data, we need to put formula. So, let's look at some examples of inefficiency there. I have some data here. I have amount in column B. I want to calculate tax in column C. Commonest feature of Excel which is used is a formula. Very simple formula. Let's say I have to pay 5% tax. Done. Now I will copy this formula and I want the total tax payable. So I have put some C colon C, which means whatever comes in column C, give me the total. Okay, so far so good. Now I have a minor problem. I want to copy the formula. Of course, all of you know how to copy the formula. What are the most common methods of copying formula? What are the most common methods? Either copy paste, drag or double click. Right? Now drag means drag of course. Copy paste means copy but to paste before you paste you still have to drag. Now if you drag it looks like this. I know you know it but I am just showing it. Is it very enjoyable? Are you happy dragging? Yes, we get salary for this, but do you really think human beings were born to drag formulas? No. So this is a benchmark of inefficiency. My hands are working, brain is not working. That means imbalance between hands and brain. That's called inefficiency. If you're an artist, hands working is fine because brain is also associated with it. In dragging, brain is idling. So. What is the problem here? Taking too long. Even if I get paid for it, I don't want to do it. Now some of you will know double click where you still go to that corner and double click. This way it looks like we saved a lot of time. Yes. But most probably the time which you saved is going to backfire and probably you will spend the time which you saved in a jail somewhere. Why am I saying that? Because when you double click, Excel stops when there is a gap. If you are lucky, there will be no gap in your data, but I have not such found a lucky person yet. Now what happens? If you didn't notice that it has stopped at row 44, you have paid, you have paid for what? You have paid tax for 44 transactions when you actually had 5008 transactions. 
that is a compliance issue which will land you into jail so bottom line copy paste drag and double click three common methods of copying formulas are inefficient you can't choose between inefficient you have to find the fourth most efficient way of doing it now let's pause a little think what is the real problem the real problem is neither excel nor me know where is the actual last row of the data now one method of finding that is to use the shortcut control end but this may not always work if that doesn't work you go to the bottom row by pressing end down arrow and then come up by saying end up arrow even this is not guaranteed to work so in short there is no guaranteed single shortcut to find the last row of a given block of data never mind somehow you have to find it there is no shortcut for it now having found the last row let's select it upwards shift control home is the shortcut then you adjust while keeping the shift key pressed now i am very sure that what i have selected is the correct range of my data i don't want to lose that range i want to make it a permanent range this is a selection which is temporary so how do you make it permanent that is why microsoft created a brilliant feature called table when you say insert table make sure it has headers which we have and now it creates a table you get a table menu as well it's a good idea to give a better name to this so we can refer to it later never mind now when there is a table what what is the big deal our primary problem was with empty cells so just for demo purpose i'll put couple of empty cells here i still want to put a formula the formula has not changed my tax is still 5% the difference is earlier there was no table now there is a table also notice i am adding the formula outside the table but i am touching the table so now excel assumes that excel has to help you and it knows that you want the formula to be copied so it assumes that you just have to press enter and then it will copy it automatically it doesn't care about the blank rows because now excel knows where the data ends so for 100% guarantee it will go to the last row you never ever have to check so now what happened we got two benefits of course time is saved and more importantly there is guaranteed accuracy now both benefits you are getting on platter functionally speaking accuracy is more important than time saving now also look at it from productivity point of view what is productivity input and output now if you have to increase the volume or quality of the output somewhere you have to increase the input as well this is paradoxical our input in terms of effort has reduced and our output is better so that is the purpose why office was created less effort and more impact so this is the importance of table now just one more thing about it at heart excel lives and breathes data okay this is the data now once you have data you can have formula based on it you can have a chart based on it and you can have a pivot table based on it in this pivot table i have just two columns i'm going to put it in values and instead of sum i'm going to do count so we know how many rows are there okay so this is how it looks right now so this is the underlying data and chart formula and pivot table all of them depend on the data we know that the problem is when i add more data what is going to happen nothing is going to happen unfortunately you have to go and manage the formula you have to go and change the range manually and you have to do the same thing for pivot table as well now we know our definition of inefficiency this is like you helping excel you added the data in excel right there you still have to go to excel and say sir i added data that's stupid that's not supposed to be done that's not your job your job is to tell excel this is my data and you manage the dependency so now create a table now when i add more data it will automatically update the chart update the formula it has actually updated the range for the pivot table but pivot table requires one extra manual step called refresh then now we are efficient whatever you are doing without table you are inefficient now i don't have time to show you everything about table so i strongly suggest you go to my blog 
which is called efficiency365.com and on my blog go to search and search for excel tables knowledge pack i have thousand plus articles there on various topics now what is a knowledge pack knowledge pack is a list of articles i have written about a particular topic so in this case about excel tables so i have written as of now some 13 articles about excel tables read them understand them there are sample files about it also with detailed explanation internalize this the bottom line is raw data must be a table that saves you time increases accuracy and makes life easier so that is the importance of table in the context of excel now having done that let us try to understand what this thing called analysis is so let's try to define what is analysis now of course we need data now when we get data where is the data coming from typically it's historical data someone has to create that data and that can only happen in past now when we are analyzing data in very simple terms what are we doing we are learning something from the past okay fine why are we doing that whatever you learn from the past past cannot be changed it's past so why are we doing it we will learn from it we will forecast it we will understand it we will understand the trend all that is still philosophy you're going to act on it now whatever action you are taking based on whatever you learned from the past why are we taking that auction uh, action we are learning from the past in order to do what in order to try and improve the that is the concept this is a simplistic but very powerful definition of analytics just analyzing and not acting is useless now having said this let's see how this works out in real life so i have data let's assume this data is already clean i have some 10 11 columns here each row is a transaction a transaction happened on this date in Allahabad. Silver card was used for buying food by a male age 31. This was the amount, got some cash back, something like that. Okay, very good. So, whatever number of columns I have, I have 12 columns and 1000, whatever, 500 rows of data. This is raw data. In order to understand what happened, I can't just keep scrolling and hope to suddenly miraculously understand useful stuff from it. In order to do that, we need to summarize the data now the most common method of summary is pivot table but remember before you make a pivot table the data should be a table okay pivot table now when you drag drop something in a pivot table for example month and amount this is one way of looking at the data one point of view one angle of looking at the data colloquially we call it a report so this is one report based on the data now question is if i have 12 columns and 1500 rows how many reports i am going to create now that depends on your company what kind of reports are expected to be created so whatever that number is let's put that number let's say i create seven reports let's put that number here now is that sounding very efficient why am i saying efficient or not because i am learning seven useful actionable things from the data which is good but who decided that this data has only seven things to offer the answer is nobody maybe if you look three years pa in the past there are only five reports getting created now something changed boss change regulation change competition landscape change whatever couple of reports were added now someone did think of those extra reports and demanded them so we are delivering those reports so today what do we do we get data we clean it up we spend time energy create reports which someone is asking for that is not called analytics that is called fulfillment now data never told you there are seven things worth looking at there may be eight nine twenty two hundred equally useful things looking at worth looking at but you're not looking at them because nobody is asking you that is intellectual inefficiency using 
Excel by dragging formulas is also inefficiency, but that's more of an operational inefficiency. Eventually, at the cost of time, your formulas will still get copied. But here, this is a bigger problem. If there was an equally useful eight thing, you never looked at it, that's a loss of business opportunity. That's a big, big problem. On the other hand, if you really looked at relevant things and did not stop at fulfillment, then you will find action items. And that's a competitive advantage or a differentiator for your business. So now with this gyan in mind, how many reports should we make? We should have a rule in mind. Now seven things is just an example. I'll just change it to few things, few reports I mean. That's not sounding very efficient. How many should we look at, ideally speaking? Logically, the answer is we should not restrict to a number all useful things from the past. So this in real life is the definition of analytics. Now this sounds like a very hypothetical philosophical statement, but it is not. Let me give you a few examples of how this has already been implemented by Excel so that our life improves. So let's take a simple example. I am going to show you some data which is already summarized. It's not a pivot table, but it's probably a copy pasted pivot table anyway. So I'm going to show you this data. Let me remove this part. Now, this is already summarized. There is no further summarization required. I just have to look at it and interpret it. Now, the most common way of doing that is to make a chart. Fine. Now, when you make a chart, notice something goes on x-axis and something gets plotted. So these are products, these are months. So if I create a chart, in this case, the what is there on, what is there in the column? Let me do it again to show you because I selected only the data. It didn't come out properly. Now when I create the same chart, it will do it properly. So right now months are on x-axis and this is on y-axis. Of course, I can say switch row and column in which case products will go here and what is plotted is monthly. Now, although this is visualization, so to say, it's still confusing. It may be a required report, make it, I'm not saying no, but that's not all. That's just one angle of looking at it. Now, if I just read these numbers, of course, it takes time, but suppose I do it. This is 76, it increased, then it dropped until less more than half, then it increased a little, increased a little. There's a pattern there. We were seeing that pattern in the chart but they were overlapping, so it was confusing. Not only that, if I just want to compare this with this for whatever reason, this is a big number, this is a small number, but visually they still have the same width. So I have to remember manually, mentally think, oh, there is a difference. So if I want to do ad hoc comparison, there's a better way of doing it. I go to conditional formatting and put a bar chart. Now this is much easier. Your brain doesn't read at all. It still understands what's happening. Not only that, I will understand something here which I would not have understood in the line chart. You'll notice that in February product 3 and Jan product 2, both are doing badly. I'm just looking at it as visual thing. I'm not even reading the numbers. So any ad hoc comparison is best done using this tool. If I want to classify them as high, medium, low, I go to icon sets. There are three categories, four categories or five categories. So how does it work? It takes the range, divides into 33%, 67%, 100%. So this way it tells me that which products have done bad across months very, very quickly. So notice the data is not changing, but I am getting additional useful information. And that is what we are trying to do. We are trying to figure out what are all the possible useful things. Now, one more method of doing that is color coding. So what does it do? It takes the lowest value. I'll just make it simpler for you. Zero is the lowest value. 100 is the highest value. So if I put 25, it'll get more of yellow and less of green. And if I put 75, it'll get more of green and less of yellow. So by looking at the distribution of color, we get to know the spread of your numbers. So this is another way of doing it. Now, I do want to see the pattern of data like a line chart, but I don't want those lines to overlap. Now what do I do? For example, in this data, they are similar, very similar, but this product sells very well. This product is not selling at all. 
Now, if I draw a line chart, it's not even going to show me the smaller ones at all. The limelight will be hogged by the bigger ones. These are flat. Now, there are multiple scales. This one is in hundreds. This is in thousands. This is in tens. I can go to this guy and say, okay, put it on secondary axis. Now, this one is shown. But what about the other two? I don't get a third axis. So, again, it has limited value. Ideally, I want to see the pattern anyway. This was this, then it reduced, then it slightly increased, decreased, slightly increased that. Now, when I'm seeing it for product one, never mind this is in hundred tens and this is in ones. I still want to see a line chart. So, that is done by doing this. I go here, empty area. I go to insert. You have seen this line chart, but there is another line chart here, which we generally don't notice. It's asking me where is the data. Make sure the height is same. And now it plots them here. Now you can understand them much better. Now you can see what is minimum, maximum and all that independent of thousands versus singles. Now, of course, you may also want to visually see that there is a negative value here. That is done by clicking on this. This is called spark lines. It gets a special menu of its own. And in that axis, you can say show axis where wherever there is a negative value, it will indicate where is zero. So it's visually possible to see that this has gone negative. Why would a product be selling negative? Because whatever we sold came back because it was defective. Sales return. Okay. So this is another way of looking at the data. Now, I am sure you have always used charts in life. If you go to charts, there are many types of charts. Now just focus on this area and think which is the biggest button in that charts area. You will notice that the biggest button is recommended charts. Why did Microsoft make it such a big button? So that some human being notices it and clicks on it. But what are we worried about doing? Creating the charts which boss wants. We create those exactly in the same way the way department is making and deliver it. We never think is this the best way of looking at the data or could it be another chart which will reveal some hidden but useful information. So what does recommended charts do? Notice I am selecting only one month right now and it actually draws different types of charts only based on the data you have selected. This is your real data. Okay, these are recommended charts. Now I am selecting three months. Again I go to the same button but notice the charts have changed. So it intelligently understands what is done. In fact, it has also drawn a scatter chart, although it is not relevant here. It gives you various types which Excel things are useful. It's up to you to decide which one is useful. I'm not saying you create all these charts, but at least eyeball them. For every traditional report you make, at least click on recommended charts and look at it. What I showed you quickly is multiple ways of trying to find all useful things. Nothing has changed in the data, but we have potentially so many ways of finding useful information. Now, the problem is if I really have seven or eight, nine different methods of looking at the same data, next time I have new data, which method will I use? That is the next question. Now, if you think a little, the first thought which comes to mind is which of these methods I use depends on the data. And obviously, we know now first thought is wrong. The correct thought is I want to find all useful things. So whatever methods of analysis I know, I will apply all of them, hoping that each one will give me something useful. Now that is a good thought. But then practically, what does it mean? I have to go select the data, use one method, try to understand is it useful, note down what is useful action item, then undo it, then try another one, then undo it. That whole thought process is very inefficient. So what do I do? So I want to try all the methods, but I don't want to waste time on doing it every time. And obviously, Microsoft knows that. So look at what is happening. I am just selecting the data. That's it. What happened? Of course, the data got selected, but something else happened. I'll show it again. Look carefully. Select the data. What happened? This small little icon came here. Normally, many times these kind of icons come, but we never look at them. 
So remember, these icons are very irritating. Microsoft knows 1 billion people get irritated every day. Still, they have kept them. What does that mean? They must be really useful to humanity. So anytime such an icon comes, next time onward, click on it. That's your best friend, not your enemy. What does it say? Quick analysis means what? Look at the finesse with which this is done. Microsoft knows that you would like to see all possible things. So you don't click. Just take the mouse cursor there. This is one, two, three, greater than, less than. Five different things in few seconds. If you like it, interpret it, take action. Otherwise, next one. The recommended charts which you never went, you don't have to go there. They are here. Now it's showing you recommended charts based on this data. It also gives you nice totals. Some average count total. This is vertical. If you scroll a little, this will show you the same thing here as well for rows and for columns. And I showed you spark lines. They come in line form or column form. Both are shown. So in few seconds, we actually tried 12 different analytical methods. And obviously, you are now pinching to our thought process, which is try to find all possible useful things. This is one example. Let's go to another more sophisticated example. Now, let's use the data which we have. This is the data. I want to look at all possible useful things. I showed you the data earlier. Now, initially I showed you a 3D map. Let me show you whatever amount of thing we do in pivot table, it's going to look like this. It's not going to give you a map. So how do you draw a map? Click on the raw data. No pivot table is required. Go to insert menu. Hopefully you'll have a 3D map. If you don't have this button and you have a slightly older version, you have to install an add-in called power map. It will not work in Excel 2010, only onwards. Now when you click on it, it actually tries to give you a complete world map. It gives you a globe. You can play around with it, go anywhere you like. You can't see any names, so let's do that first. Map labels. So it gives you everything. You can search for a location as well. And it will go there. So it'll go. This requires an internet connection because it's doing live encoding. Now that's okay. This is just a map. Any map will do this. What is the big deal? The big deal is this is a part of Excel. You don't pay anything for it. It's available out of the box. And now it's asking you in your data, which column contains location information. So I have a location name. Now once you choose, it tries to plot it. But it needs to know what you have selected. Is it a city? Is it a district? Is it pin code? Is it a country? Right now it's interpreting as country because it's default. You open it and look at the sophistication. This guy is capable of understanding all these. We do not have lat longs. We just have names. But those are not names of country. They are cities. So you just say city and then it will geocode those automatically and plot them. Now don't get impressed. It has just identified the locations. Now we need to see how much revenue we are getting from each location. So that's height. Why is it calling it a height? Because it's going to be a 3D bar chart. In this case, I want to put amount. There's the legend. So I click on it and delete. Now this is how it created a 3D map. At this stage, it is very impressive, but absolutely useless because we are sitting on top. It's like we are flying on top of the bars. Can't compare them. That's why there are these buttons. These are for tilting and rotation. So I can tilt the map, rotate, zoom in, zoom out and get a better view of what is happening in life. This is a very quick introduction to this. I'll give you one more important thing about it and then we will move to another brilliant feature in analytics. So now let's look at another way of achieving our basic objective, how to learn all useful things from the data. We'll use exactly the same data. 
This time I'm not creating a pivot table, not creating a map, nothing. Now if you have the latest version of Excel, you may not see this feature yet. If you go to home tab, you have a button called ideas. This is under preview right now. In couple of months, it will get released. And if you have the latest version, you will get it. But this is to show you how Microsoft is implementing the thought process of trying to find all useful things. All that you have to do is click on ideas. Now this data will be sent to Microsoft Machine Learning and it will analyze it. Of course, it doesn't understand what is a month and what is a location. It is a statistical analysis, numbers, text and dates. That's all. Now it found few things. It shows you what it thinks is useful. For example, look at this one. It's saying in Rajkot, females, this expenditure as an upward trend. Now this is just one useful information it has given you. In order to arrive at this particular chart, it has actually behind the scenes taken all locations and compared the male female breakup there. And it only found this one interesting because the trend line is significant. Probably the R square is more than or nearer to one, which means statistically interesting. So if you want this to investigate further, you can just say insert pivot chart, in which case it'll add a new sheet add the pivot table and give you the chart. Now you can look at this trend line, you can analyze it further, you can go to format trend line, ask them to show the equation or square, whatever. And then of course, this is done. Now, this is not all. It has found 37 equally useful things. Now, when you go down, notice they are in different categories and some are maximum, some are ranges, one of the interesting ones which is very useful is outliers. Now let me add this pivot chart to explain what it is showing you. If I add this one, what is it doing? It is creating a pivot table by date. Now this is very rare because even if you make pivot tables every day, we will never put the actual date in the row area. You will typically group it by month, quarter or year. In this case, it did day wise or date wise and then it found that there are some outliers. Outliers means standard deviation plus or minus two. So this is something relevant and you need to go to the field now and find out what happened in these transactions so that the value was much higher than the regular stuff. So this is implementation of the thought process. Now look at how much effort it had to put in. It's comparing multiple fields, card type, gender, month, an amount. So it tried all the permutations and it found that gold card with gender females and month of Feb and May have much more here. Now maybe other months also Feb and May were more, but the difference between remaining ones and these is significantly higher. So this is an implementation of our thought process trying to find all useful things. Now this uses machine learning, but Many of us think that machine learning or artificial intelligence is going to take away jobs. In this case, it is not going to take away your job. It is going to help you exceed your JD because nobody asked for this report. You found it first. So you will get the credit. And if you learn this more and more, you can be more effective in managing whatever part of business you are managing. That's one example. Now let me show you something called Power BI. How do you... This is a tool called Power BI Desktop. How do you get it? This is free. You go to powerbi.com, sign in using your corporate ID and download Power BI Desktop. This tool works independently of Excel, but of course it can get data from all sorts of places. It... Earlier I showed you in Excel data menu, there is something called get and transform which is the new method of getting data and cleaning it from all kinds of sources. So the list of sources in Excel get and transform and in Power BI is very much similar. In fact, some sources are extra in Power BI, but it is comparable. Now, what is the idea? Idea is, in this case, the data is in Excel. You can import the data from Excel, CSV. In fact, if you have data having a folder and multiple files in that folder. You don't have to open each file and append. 
just give the folder this guy will even consolidate the data it's very very powerful now having done this this is power bi desktop when you import data you will get a blank visualization like this now you can create your visualizations here rather than what we traditionally do what do we traditionally do we go to the data we create pivot tables and pivot charts and try to create a sort of a dashboard so I have three pivot tables some slices for filtering and stuff like that this is the traditional way of working on excel and creating reports instead of that this guy gives you a blank area and you can still create sort of pivot tables and pivot charts here so how do you use this this is the place where raw data is shown after import this is the place where you build your reports on this side it shows you the tables which you have and the columns this area shows you which type of visualizations are available to you so what do you do you choose a visualization if you want now this creates a blank pie chart now what do i do i'm just going to close the filter area for now now you decide what you want to put there so i want to put amount and break it down by type of card so it is like drag drop and it creates the pie chart that's one way of doing it the other way of doing it is first drag drop so i want to drag and drop card type this is text so it just puts it like a pivot table if i put amount on top of it it will be another mini pivot table now in pivot table the pivot table stays and then you add a pivot chart in this case what happens this mini pivot table itself can be converted to a different type of visualization so that's another way of creating it a third and very interesting way of creating is just to double click on an empty area now it's saying just tell me what you want i'll give it to you you should know the names of your columns so i'm saying give me amount now it doesn't ask you what by default it does some of course if you want average you could have said average amount okay now i want to break it down by what let's say i want to break it down by month so it does that and you want to show it as a different type of chart no problem you say as and it shows you various types of charts it can do for you so let's say i'll do a line chart so it shows me my data very quickly so same thing can be used to create maps also so i'm just going to say amount by state but this is not a map now i say as map and that's it of course when you create the visualization you can rearrange them resize them and all that if you want to look at it in detail you can click on this button and it becomes sort of full screen you can investigate in detail and come back so instead of creating pivot tables and pivot charts i have actually created a more interesting looking dashboard also remember these four charts we could have created using four pivot charts in traditional excel as well the map is new but we also know how to make a map in excel as well. the difference is now in typical situation you will create a sort of a dashboard here now when you want to present this you are going to copy paste this as probably images in powerpoint and show it and that is a problem when you are presenting it and multiple senior people have come for the meeting to review the data whatever you have copy pasted will be shown in the powerpoint but if they ask you a question which is not addressed in what you have you have created then the typical answer is you'll have to wait i'll get back to you now that makes business decision making slow this is not agile business by any means why are we saying i'll get back to you you have the excel file you can potentially create a report but it takes a little time and during the meeting you don't have that time so that get back to you part is slowing down stuff so everyone came for the meeting their time was wasted because had they known that additional information there and then we could have acted on it so now with that in mind look at this i am showing this dashboard i am not copy pasting it to powerpoint i am showing this live so now if someone asks show me how silver card is contributing to different types of expenses or how silver card is used by male female or how is it contributing to yearly revenue all that i have to do is click on silver that becomes a filter everything else gets automatically filtered this is not a new or checking concept 
all the BI tools like SAS, Tableau, Cognos, uh, all of our business objects have been doing it for years. The difference is this is now accessible to everyone because this is free. There is a paid version only if you want to share this as a web based dashboard. Otherwise, you create this dashboard, create file, save as it creates a PBIX file that you can share with people. They download the free version. Of course, it has a limitation because if files become big because of large data size, soon it will become impractical. But to understand Power BI, to utilize its power, this is free. Whatever I'm showing you right now is free. Now, we answered a question right there without saying I'll get back to you. Now, boss asks you another question. What happened in 2014? So remember, anything which is plotted is an implicit filter. You click on 2014, now that becomes a filter. I want to see what happened for fuel expense. Now, this is the filter. Now, look at this. In pivot table, if you had applied another filter, the pie chart physical size would still remain the same, only the numbers would change. Here it is showing you the overall picture as well as contribution by whatever is the current filter. That's very interesting because when I go to another one, notice that contribution will increase or decrease and I can visually see how each one of them is differently contributing. Now the next question boss asks is what is happening in male customers? Now you don't click. Teen bar with three times we have shown. Next time new question comes, you give the mouse to whoever it is and say, why don't you click? Do you really need a person to click? You can click yourself. Now that sounds like a funny thing, but that is empowerment. Probably you have eliminated the need for the meeting because even if I'm showing an interactive dashboard in a meeting and there are five people sitting, each one of them wants to see it in a different way. And you can only do it once. At one point, you can only satisfy one person. Had they seen this at their own time, looked at it in whatever manner they want to look at it, and then come to a meeting to act on the actionable items, that would be a much more productive meeting. So typical review meetings can be eliminated. That is an example of digital transformation. So this is one method. Now this goes beyond that. Now I'm showing you a much simpler chart very simple line chart, month and revenue. If you look at it, anybody will ask the first question, what happened in June? Because it suddenly dropped from 49,000 to 23, almost 50% drop. What happened? Now, if I click on June, there is nothing else here to filter. So it doesn't help in spite of the fact that it is live data. Now, if boss says, tell me why this happened. We have plotted amount and date. Now that decrease in amount can be explained by showing what changed by card type, which state went down, which class of city went down, which gender did not use our business, which expense type went down. So this absolute decrease can be explained by using any of the other fields which are currently not plotted. Now when you say I'll get back to you, you are going to go back with some additional reports. Maybe you will go back with a card type and state wise report. But maybe there was an equally useful thing by class or by city or by gender. So again, coming back to our universal requirement, how can this be done right there during the meeting? So right click, say analyze. There is a brilliant option here called explain the decrease. This uses artificial intelligence. Now when you do this, it's telling you there is so much decrease. And if you take age of the customer into account, these three specific ages are contributing to the maximum decrease. All the age groups have declined only, but these three are the prominent contributors. That's not all. That's just one parameter. This is by state. This is by city. This is by type of expense. And it goes on and on to take into account all the other fields. This is the implementation of our so-called thought process called analyze all possible useful things and learn from them. Now, if you find something useful, this can actually be useful in multiple ways. Now, this is a chart showing me by type of expense. Okay, this is one way of looking at it. There's another way of looking at exactly the same data. So, it's putting 
the May data here, June data here, and it's sort of a scatter chart. And this dotted line is showing the trend. And this green area means growth, red area means decline. That's another way of looking at the data. Other traditional way of looking at the data is a 100% stack chart. What is it showing you? The same thing. First is May, second is June. We are used to seeing stack charts. But there is one, what does a stack chart tell you? The contribution. This is a 100% stack chart. So it tells you that in the first month, the maximum contributor was food. In the second month, also maximum contribution came from food. But if you look at the fuel, in first month, this was contributing more. In the second month, that has gone down. So if you actually want to rank them by month, it is difficult because these are shown in the exactly same order. Travel remains travel, healthcare remains healthcare and so on. So there is a nice, brilliant new type of visualization, which is this. It looks weird right now, but just take a pause and look at it. What is it showing? Everything has gone down. That is obvious. Now this food has gone down. Now this one called fuel was contributing second highest that has gone to the fourth position all the way. And something which was at the fourth position has come to second position. So this is stacked bar chart with ranking, which is a brilliant variation. Wherever you see a stacked bar chart, you should see this as well. Anyway, now that you have found something useful here, maybe you want to say next time onwards, I should monitor this, in which case, you can just add it to your standard report and monitor it in future. Now, in this case, it is still showing me May and June, whereas I have many months here. That has happened because for this particular thing, it was filtered on May and June. So, if you really want to see it across time, remove the filter. So, now it looks complicated, but actually, it's a very intelligent way of looking at what happened. There was a decrease, and what is the contribution by this? You may not see it very clearly here. You can go to full screen view and then you get a much better picture. Now look at March to April. There was a decrease, but fuel and food actually increased. And that was offset by the decrease in travel, healthcare and entertainment. A completely different way of understanding what's happening in your business. So this is a quick introduction to how you can use data analytics better and try to achieve this. The more you learn, the more actionable items you have. And this is your way of exceeding your JD. At this stage, let's understand one more important thing. All of you know what is Office, but nowadays most companies have Office 365. What does that really mean? All of us are familiar with Word, Excel, PowerPoint and Outlook. By the way, incidentally, recently, their logos changed. They are more modern logos and they are in SVG format, which is scalable. Never mind. All these are desktop products, as we know. There is one more desktop product called OneNote, which is not commonly used or known. But as we go along, you will learn it as well. All these are desktop products. This is Office, traditional Office. Office 365 includes many more products. So if I just show you a long list like this, you will get more confused than impressed. So let me rearrange them in a more logical way. By the way, how was this done? There is a nice feature in more uh, PowerPoint called MOV, a transition, which allows you to do this kind of complex animation in seconds. Never mind. Earlier, the products look like this. And supposedly I rearranged them in this manner. How does it matter? What changed? I actually grouped them in different categories. Each one handles a different business need. Now, what does that mean? Let me put some context to it. The first category of products allow you to create stuff. So documents, spreadsheets, presentations and one note is used for taking notes what is that s that is called sway sway is used for creating web pages so let me just put everything in perspective and then i'll explain so let me put the names also so it's easier to understand so sway is used for creating 
responsive web pages by anybody without knowing anything in HTML, JavaScript, or any design principles. A Word document can also be quickly converted to a web page. Without talking to IT, you can create a web page, get a link to share it, and that's it. Forms are like Google Forms or SurveyMonkey for surveys as well as quiz. So that is different types of creation. Now, of course, we create emails also, but that I have put under communication, and that's the job of Outlook, email, calendar, tasks, we know that. Now, when we create files, the question is where to store them. That is OneDrive. As we go along, you will understand why it is important to save all files on OneDrive instead of local drive. Departmental files are ideally stored on SharePoint. Now, this pink thing is a special product called Stream. This is used for storing videos. I'm sure you have a lot of videos for learning, for events, all kinds of things. Typically, we put videos on a file share or SharePoint, which is wrong. Video is a special type of file format and it is not delivered like a typical file. Suppose I'm watching a one hour video and I suddenly jump to 45 minutes. It doesn't need to download the first 45 minutes, but a file server doesn't understand it. You require a special type of server called streaming server. So stream is a video streaming service, which is a part of Office 365. Quickly, I'll show you two benefits of using that service. So here is a video I have uploaded to stream. Now, when I upload this to stream, notice there's a video and it plays. Nothing great that happens anywhere. But because it is a streaming server, it understands which device I'm using to watch the video and what is the currently available bandwidth for me. Depending on that, it will dynamically adjust the quality like YouTube or Vimeo does. That's number one. Second, when you upload a video, one important thing you should do, you should go to settings, update video details, and then change the language to English. Just by doing that, what happens is it auto generates a caption file. This is very useful. Because if you put a video, the transcript gets generated automatically. Not only is this transcript going to follow along with the video, like and it you happens video, on YouTube. So you don't have to take any notes. Just listen. So now if I jump to another place, see what happens. Not go there. Generally, if you are copy pasting pivot table for doing something, most probably you don't know pivot table till. So it creates a transcript. Currently only English and Spanish are supported. Now, more importantly, if I am looking for a particular topic in a long video, I don't have to go through randomly searching or linearly see the whole video. What can I do? I can just search for a particular word or a phrase and then it will tell you at different points of time where it appears. So I click on so that particular place table, come on. and it will go to the right. correct place and start playing from it. That's one immediate brilliant benefit of using Stream. The second benefit is sometimes we have people in the video. It could be a panel discussion, it could be people, whatever it is. So it is able to detect spaces. No special configuration is required. It does it automatically using machine learning and it creates a face timeline so there are three faces here so this guy spoke here here and here and so on so if i want to look at or hear someone specific i can directly jump to a location these two benefits plus many many other benefits so please move all your videos from wherever they are to stream and life is good so coming back files are stored on OneDrive or sharepoint videos are stored on stream now we did discuss a lot about task list. Task list is available on Outlook, Outlook task folder, we just saw it. Now many of us also have Outlook mobile app installed, but mobile app does not show tasks from Outlook. That's a limitation. So Microsoft created a separate product called ToDo, which is going to show you your Outlook tasks. You must have realized by now that Outlook tasks are very critical to our life because that is what is going to decide how we can exceed our JD and execute our work properly. So it is important to have access to my task even when I'm on mobile. So install the to-do app and life is good. Now, 
my tasks or my tasks they should be in my outlook folder and i should be able to see them on to do and mobile now i'm a part of projects which each project also has a task list which is called a project plan typically that is scattered by creating excel files and sending them to each other which is a bad idea because a project manager makes a task list sends it to others now they have to wait for updates now if i update it only the project manager will know what changed other team members don't know what is the status of the task so there is a lot of confusion now of course i don't want to put project specific tasks in my task list because my task list is my task list what i really need is a shared task list across my team and that is done using planner planner is also available as a mobile app the shared tasks are visible here personal tasks are visible here in fact in to do you can also see planner tasks so there is integration this is how you execute work better of course outlook is used for ad hoc communication we have seen that outlook should not be used the important part of using outlook is to understand when not to use it which we will cover very soon yammer is like a facebook inside the company it's a social network which is for uh, global communication so boss wants to put an announcement instead of putting it on intranet we put it on yammer intranet what happens there is limited space on the home page so announcement stays for some time there is very little interaction possible whereas in yammer when you post something people can like share discuss all that kaizala is like a secure chat it is an equivalent of let's say whatsapp to start with but it has many many other benefits bottom line official work can be done in kaizala and all the data is archived for future discovery or compliance reasons I'm not going to go into too much of Kaizala, but it's a brilliant tool. Teams is used for teamwork, team communication. When you have a new project, create a team, and we will cover it in detail a little later. Earlier, for ad hoc works, chat, meetings, we were using Skype, but now all that functionality of Skype is available in Teams. So if you are already using Skype for business, for chat, meetings, videos, audios, screen sharing, teaching. Try Teams. You will never go back to Skype. It's brilliant. With the same infrastructure, same network, this will give you better quality. Now, Power BI, we have already seen. That's the analysis part. And this is an adjunct to Excel. It doesn't replace pivot tables or stuff which we already do in Excel, but it's a method of creating interactive dashboards from all kinds of data. It also has a data import and cleanup engine, which is very powerful which is equivalent to get and transform in Excel. Now automation is also important. For example, I'm conducting a survey and that survey is going to be open for one month. It's a customer satisfaction survey. Now I may analyze at the end of the month and realize that some customers have given me bad feedback. Now I don't want to respond to them after one month. I want to respond to them as soon as they submit the form that shows customer centricity and I'm responding to it. Now, forms is a separate tool. If I want to send an email to customers saying, please, sorry for the trouble and please tell us more and we will definitely act on it. That's as soon as they submit the form without any um, human intervention. And at the same time, a mail should go to person who is handling that sales or customer relationship saying you have to act on it now. Now, to do that, we will typically need to do some programming. Now you need to know how forms works, you need to know how Outlook works, how to do programming between them. That's a complicated thing. So what happens? Flow comes into picture. Now, all of us know what is an Outlook rule. We create rules in Outlook saying a person, mail comes from this person, put it in that folder. Those are called Outlook rules. Outlook rules have two components. What starts the rule? That's called the trigger. So a mail coming with that person's name in it and action which is in this case move to a folder so it's trigger and action now the problem with outlook rules is they are good they are very powerful if you use them correctly but they work only in the context of outlook now here i have a situation where the trigger is in forms and the action is happening in outlook or there may be a twitter handle for your company and you are monitoring that twitter feed and whenever something comes, I want to put that Twitter feed data into an Excel file. 
So now that trigger is somewhere outside in Twitter and my destination is a OneDrive file of Excel. Now I am trying to automate things across products. Now that can be a complicated thing, but that becomes very simple with Flow. So you can tell Flow, you monitor this particular form for customer satisfaction. Whenever a form is submitted, look at it. Look at the score. If it is less than three, you should do two things. So form being submitted is trigger. In this case, action will be send a mail to customer. Also send a mail to customer relationship manager. That is a quick example. Similarly, the flow thing can monitor your Twitter handle automatically. And whenever a tweet comes from a particular handle or with a hashtag, it will add the data automatically to a specified Excel file. Now, the best part is all this happens without programming. So it's available to all users without IT intervention, without writing a single line of code and having liability of maintaining. And finally, Power Apps, which is a mobile application development platform. So Power Apps is an app. You installed it on mobile. By default, it doesn't have any app or application in it. But very quickly, without coding, you can create applications for business automation. And once you put it, you can just uh, replicate it across mobile devices containing Power Apps. It's a very fast platform of creating zero or very little code based mobile apps. So that at a glance is what Office 365 has to offer. Most customers use it in pockets. Many customers don't even know they have all these components. And many times we misuse those components because we know only a part of the story. So it's important to understand what is available and use the right tool in the right place that will lead to efficiency across the board. So that's Office 365 in a nutshell. So one of the questions I got during the break, and anyway, I had forgotten to show that, is uh, I showed you the 3D map, right? But how to create it that I have not shown, so let me do that. We'll use the same data. Notice I have a column called location name. I don't have latitude, longitude, I just have names. Doesn't matter. You go to insert menu, 3D map. If you have Office 2016 and above, this is built in. If it's 2013, you'll have to install an add-in called Power Map, Power Map, which is free. So when I go there, it gives me an empty globe like this. So anything globally can be plotted. Now, it needs at least two fields. One is which contains location and some data to plot it. So I'm going to use uh, the field called location ID or location name. And then you have to tell him how to interpret that column. So it understands all these things, including pin codes. Pin codes. So this one I want to treat as city. So as soon as you do that, it will plot them. You don't have to find the light logs, it will do it on its own. This requires internet connection. I want to see the names, so I say map labels. So it puts map labels also. And now I want to put say revenue. So I'll choose amount in the area called height. Why is it? Saying height is not a 2D map, it's a 3D chart. So this is your 3D chart. Now of course this is very impressive but absolutely useless. <laughs> because you can't compare those things right now. So all maps have a zoom in zoom out button. This one also has a tilt and rotate button. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay, there's much more to it, but 
now you know how to learn so go there learn for yourself utilize it so whenever you get a column of data containing locational information don't wait for someone to ask create it apply your knowledge of domain expertise you will find action items there okay so that's how you create a 3d map now i'm going to switch gears a little because i want to cover some other tools as well so one of the common things we do across different products is we create files every day all kinds of files we create question is where do we store them i create a new file i have to store it where whether it is word excel powerpoint doesn't matter typically where do i store it drive drive some drive local drive or cloud cloud which cloud <laughs> one drive how many use one drive very good one drive personal or one drive business so corporate data should not be put on one drive personal maybe you already have one drive subscription for your company but either they have not given it to you or you have not asked for it so ask for it typically it will be there anyway there is a mistake in most people's usage of one drive google drive whoever so typically what we do create a file then for 20 years we have been saving it to local machine t colon d colon my documents desktop and then upload to right right or wrong so this is one copy of the file this is a understand this is not the way to use one drive this is the worst way of using one drive if microsoft wanted you to have it like this one copy and second copy they would have used a brand name called two drive understand so this is not the way you use it now why do you use it first of all because if you store your files on local drive there are at least three problems if not more one is of course disk fails and all your effort is gone id is not responsible for local desktop backup we know we are responsible but we are irresponsible so we don't do anything about it so that's a risk now if you are not carrying your machine and you want a file and the machine is off what do you do there are another location you are not carrying your laptop you don't have a laptop whatever you need that file desperately what do you do ask someone to email it but it's in your laptop no login kaisa karega login is a problem like disk failing is a problem okay so this feeling problem solution is take backup file not with me file inside a closed machine far away from me what is the solution call your friend share your password with them in return they will share their password with you <laughs> that is the worst way of handling the situation but that bad solution we are very good at the good solution called take backup we never do so bad things are easier to implement now my third problem when you store a file there is one file does it remain one file <coughs> because you will need inputs from someone how will you send it to them a cc with attachment whatever kitna copy ho gaya five and they will reply how many files what is your job now copy paste how many times first thought is wrong 
फिर फाइल में पूरा सिलेक्ट ऑल करके कॉपी करेगा क्या नहीं ना इतने ना फाइल ऑल्सो मल्टीपल कॉपी बेस्ट एंड देन फाइनली वी अचीव समथिंग इज दिस द फाइनल कॉपी नो बिकॉज सेल्स ने क्या लिखा एच को नहीं मांग और एक बार तो भेजना पड़ेगा हमसे कम नो प्रॉब्लम अपने पास बहुत टाइम है सेवन एट नाइन टेन माई एडिशनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज वाइस प्रेसिडेंट कॉपी बेस्ट कितना कॉपी हो गया क्या फर्क पड़ता है वॉट इज दिस कॉल्ड इज इट एफिशियंसी तो वॉट इज इट कॉल्ड नो इट इज नॉट कॉल्ड इन एफिशियंसी दिस इज कॉल्ड टीम वर्क As a team, we are spoiling each other's lives. So never mind. Problem is it? Okay. Problem ka solution nikal ne ke liye we have a problem solving technique, common one, the Toyota one. What is the root cause? Bro, is liye copy ban rahe. Common sensical solution is ek jagah pe rakho, logon ko dhara ne do. We tried that with a file share. प्रॉब्लम क्या है यू कैन शेयर द लिंक ऑफ वन ड्राइव हां दैट इज व्हाट आई एम कमिंग टू बट ओनली 7 पीपल आउट ऑफ 200 आर यूजिंग इट दैट टू मिस यू सिग्नेट बिकॉज़ दे मेड टू कॉपीज सो फाइल शेयर डजंट वर्क बिकॉज़ इफ आई एम एडिटिंग द फाइल अदर पर्सन गेट्स लॉक्ड आउट सो दैट्स व्हाई ऑल ऑफ अस नीड दिस ईच वन ऑफ अस नीड्स वन प्लेस टू स्टोर ऑल आवर फाइल्स दैट प्लेस कैन नॉट बी लोकल ड्राइव and when i put a file there even if 20 people are involved in it i never have to make a copy of it always one copy and now the laptops are becoming smaller the local storage becoming small and i mean need a lot of archival files to be stored so i need a lot of space so you get 1 terabyte of space 1000 gb so one person one place one copy one tv that is why it is called one drive most probably all of you have it now having it is not enough you have to know how to use it properly so i'll just quickly demonstrate it okay i create a file now for 20 years clicking here has become a spinal cord level reflex this stimulus doesn't reach our brain this is your enemy please don't store it there so you have to have a lot of courage and patience don't click here move slowly up 7 km somewhere you will see this not personal if you don't have it for testing purpose you can use personal features are same now click here ideally create folders logically and then save it earlier i was clicking on pc instead of that i clicked on one drive there is no extra effort so now what happened file is saved where i think ninth time i am telling you first thought is wrong where did it get stored this is my local file explorer it got stored locally first and that icon means now it is getting uploaded to one drive this is very important to understand so even if it says it has actually stored it on one drive it has not as of yet as of yet first local copy gets stored and the local copy knows it belongs to one drive it will manage itself what is the immediate importance of this if it was only storing on one drive and you went offline for whatever reason no internet not having access to a file you created is unfair now that never happens you can edit it offline when you become online the file will synchronize automatically that part is clear now second if your machine is off and you are in another location what happens you borrow any laptop any machine cyber cafe whatever go to browser any browser windows linux doesn't matter and log into office.com 
use your corporate ID and then you will see OneDrive. Now in that OneDrive, whatever file you have stored already is available. So from anywhere in the world, assuming IT has given, allowed you to use corporate OneDrive from any laptop, this will work. Sometimes IT guys restricted in such a way that only official machines are around, but still it is better than not having access and needing to share passwords. Now I don't have my laptop, there is nobody else with laptop. Then what do I do? I have my mobile. So mobile also has OneDrive app. So I am going to my mobile and on the mobile I have OneDrive app. And what do I have there? I have the same file on mobile. And if you have Office 365, you can also install Word on it. Now I am opening that file in Word on my mobile and I can edit it. At that point, maybe my laptop is off. Okay. So what do I do now? I can edit it here. Absolutely no problem. So I say edit. Now it's done. Now I am closing the file. Now if and when I come back to my laptop, what happens? The file will synchronize itself. I am just simulating the fact that this file would have been closed now. When I come back and open the file, that will have synchronized. So far clear? Now, suppose my hard disk was bad and all my local files are deleted. I have never taken backup. IT gives me a new laptop. I log in using the same ID. All the files are still there on one drive. They will automatically come down. So there is automatic backup, automatic restore. Many times we work on a file and forget to save it. And then half an hour work gets lost because file hung or something like that. Now you get another benefit. This is automatically on. Kuch nahi karna hai. So what does that exactly mean? Right now, this file is already saved. Now notice what I am doing. I just put one hyphen. What is it doing? Now, can I undo? Of course I can undo. Now it is saved. It is saving again. Now when it is saved, did I have to say control S? No. It's saving on its own. Of course there is a 10 minute recovery interval that does not save the file. Creates a separate file in which the edited version is. So even if you auto save on, files do get corrupted. You know that. So this means what? This means when I finish working, I just close the file. I don't save it. So auto save. Understand? What does that mean practically? Practically speaking, what does that mean? What does that mean? Now uh, one more demo. Just changing the font color. What does it say? So when you go back and start using OneDrive, what do you have to do? Save it to OneDrive, yes. Don't look at that and keep admiring Are wa save kar rahe. You never have to save again. That's the important thing. And you never will get corrupted files. That's the practical advantage. Make sense? Okay. Now I need inputs from someone. What do I do? I don't go to Outlook at all. I say share. If I want to, I can still go to Outlook. So let me show you that. Now when you go to Outlook, what do you normally do? We say insert attachment. If you have a newer version of Outlook, at least Recent files either dikta achkar. Usme bhi file dikta hai, usme icon aisa rehta hai. Means what? Ye one drive ka file hai. Uspe click karega to bichara puchta hai. Wo bolta bhi share kar link. But hum 20 baras se attaches copy kar rahe hai. Share link ka benefit walo nahi hai. So please never click on this. I won't say never. But let me show you what sharing link does. And then we will. So why come all the way here? In Word itself there is a clear button. 
So multiple options here. I want to send it only to my boss. Okay, no problem. Okay. <laughs> Abhi kya mail, mail to gaya, lekin kya gaya mail mein link gaya. Now if this was an excel file, there is no excuse ki bada file report bhej nahi sakta hai. Doesn't matter now. Okay, now let's see boss ko kya ho. I have access to my boss ka mailbox also. <laughs> yes, nigga, the IT people know how to do that. Most powerful person in the company is not chairman, managing director, biggest shareholder. It's the IT administrator, they can do anything. So boss, this is boss. Boss got a mail. Looks like there is an attachment, but this is not an attachment, this is just a link. Now where can boss open it? On iPad, mobile, browser, cyber cafe. Whether that machine has word installed or not doesn't matter. Now one problem is, Right now, I means Nitin, I am already editing this. At the same time, boss is trying to open it. If it was on a file share, boss would have got an error saying, sorry, wait. So now let's see what happens. So file did open. Now what happened? If I want, I can open it in Word as well. It is telling me that Nitin is also editing. It is not preventing me from editing. So for a demo purpose, I am going to split the screen. Right side is boss, left side is Nitin. Remember, right side is boss, left side is Nitin. Now, right side is boss. Boss is clicking on the word mobile. What is happening there? Both sides know who is editing where. So if you want to trouble the boss, keep looking. <laughs> That, is, that will not take you very far, but just for enjoyment. <laughs> now problem is this looks good, but suppose I start editing and boss also wants to trouble me. Notice the editing is also updating live. But same paragraph two people do, it will be confusing. So the other side paragraph is automatically locked. How long till I am editing? It will release the lock. This is not a security feature, it's just for convenience. Notice I didn't edit, the lock is gone. Understand? So without confusion, what is going to happen now? Right now it's a demo show, I'm showing only two people editing. There is no limit, 27 people can also do exactly the same thing. One person is using mobile, another is using Linux, third one using full version of Word, fourth one using Mac, iPad, doesn't matter. Understand? This is called digital transformation. At the end of it, it doesn't matter how many people edited the file, there is one copy. Make sense? Now there is only one practical problem. So let's say boss finished editing. I also edited something. So I am just making this paragraph red. Now suppose I don't like the paragraph, I delete. Because I can undo. But suppose I delete, close the file. Now when I open the file, the paragraph is gone permanently and do is not going to work. In the inefficient method of sharing files as attachments, that intermediate file is not going to work as an attachment. Because there is only one copy which is always the final copy. So if I made a mistake, I can't go back. So of course that has been thought of. I never saved the file itself, forget about save as. So I created this file in front of you. Right now it's 2.49. 10 minutes back I created the file. It has already created so many versions. Automatically. So if I want to, I can open a previous version. This is the current version. It opened that 2.44 version. Do I see the paragraph? Okay. If I want it, what do I say? Restore. If I just want to see kya change why, there is a compare button also. Now this is an older version. I already have the file latest version. 
When I click on compare, it will not touch either of them. It will create a third file. This shows you the combined version. This shows you original. This shows you revised. This is all happening out of the box. And all this is happening because you realize that one drive is good for me and my PC is bad for me. So remember, your biggest enemy in terms of file management is who is this? Joker. What is this famous dialogue? Correct. So what is our dialogue? <laughs> so remember, all new files never store locally. That's the standard operating procedure now. Understand? Unless you want to trouble your files, you created the file, right? It's like your baby. You want to trouble your baby or pamper your baby. So pampering means one drive, trouble means PC. Anyway, you have a local copy, so nothing to lose. So remember, this is a ferocious villain. If you store a file on local drive, he's looking. <laughs> so to cut a very long story short, just by clicking on one drive, you get 12 benefits. I am not going to read all of them. We know all these. Now, I am not saying 100% of files should be sent as attachments. There may be a legal or statutory or business need. You are sending a quotation for an RFP. You can't send a link because that has to be immutable. Correct? So that may be 5% of cases, only 95% to Zindagi Sudarga. Then this is very important. I sent a mail to whom? Boss. Now, hey, boss kya kar Boss kuch karta nahi hai, but is bar forward kya boss ne. Kisko forward kya? Dusre ko. This is the biggest problem with sending file attachments. Once you forward or send a file as attachment, you have no control over it. What the other party does, you will never know. Now this guy forwarded it. Nitin doesn't know boss sent it to assistant. So now this is assistant's mailbox. This is the assistant guy. Assistant got a mail from whom? Boss. Nitin doesn't know. So what will he do? He will click on it. Boss ko nahi, boss ko malum hai, Nitin ko nahi malum hai. So kya hua? So one drive gives you control, attachments you lose control. Make sense? Now ye jo assistant hai, wo leha thik hai, request access button hai, click karta hu. Phir kya hoga? Phir kya hoga bada? Mail to jayega kisi ko. So Nitin sent it to, boss sent it to, abhi assistant bol raha request access. Assistant kya sochta hai? Boss ko jayega mail. Actually kis ko jayega? So Nitin ko samjhega ki boss ne forward kiya tha. So Nitin ko samjha hai ki boss ko nahi samjha hai. Do you understand the political benefit of this? Now in this case boss is just a joke but it could be anybody. Same rule applies. Okay, so that is that. Now, where were we? So 12 benefits. I am sure this has also happened to you before. You send a mail with attachment, 20 people. Usme galti nikla. Kya karega? Bravo. Normally, you don't have to read any mail, but you have to read it. But you don't have any benefit. Now, what will happen? You send a file. Actually, we are not sending a file. We are sending a link. So, what will happen? The mistake will happen. File is not going. Understand? So, those are the benefits of OneDrive. Where were we? You saw that. Now whether to edit a file on browser or on the full version is your choice. So what will you use? Browser or full word or Excel? 
So remember, first thought is wrong. It is not a hard and fast rule. You have to think, what am I trying to do to this file? If it's a 100 page document, I want to edit one paragraph, browser is fast. If it's a 200 MB Excel file and I just want to play with pivot table, browser is fast. I want to do comprehensive editing because all features are not available on browser. Then you open it in the native product. So it's a case to case decision. It's not hard and fast rule. This we already know. This we know. Done. And if you somehow run out of space, one TV, you can request IT to request Microsoft, they give you 5 TV, no extra cost. Now, so before someone asks, I have a 200 MB Excel file. कितना जगह गया मेरा 200 एमबी गया बट उसका 40 वर्जन बना उसका नहीं स्पेस काउंट होता है ओनली बेस फाइल का स्पेस काउंट होता है अनलिमिटेड वर्जनस ऑफ फ्री माइक्रोसॉफ्ट के पास बहुत बड़ा हार्ड डिस्क है टेंशन मत लो यूज करो फिर से ढंग से सो बॉटम लाइन ऑल न्यू फाइल्स मस्ट गो टू वन ड्राइव ओल्ड फाइल्स डोंट जस्ट ड्रैग ड्रॉप माय डॉक्यूमेंट्स उसमें बहुत सारे गंदे फाइल पड़े जो दस बरस से खोले नहीं है वो खुद को इंटरनेट को और वन ड्राइव में तकलीफ मत हो ओनली एक्टिव फाइल शुड बी मूव टू वन ड्राइव नॉट कॉपीड मूव एज ए डिफरेंस यू ऑलरेडी हैव अ लोकल कॉपी इफ यू ड्राइव एंड ड्रॉप इट टू वन ड्राइव एंड कॉपी इट तीन कॉपी बनेगा उसका एक ओरिजिनल लोकल प्लस एक लोकल सिम कॉपी प्लस एक सर्वर कॉपी सो मूव करो नहीं तो कन्फ्यूज हो जाओगे कभी ये कॉपी एडिट करेगा कभी वो कॉपी कन्फ्यूज हो जाएगा कंक्लूजन क्या है वन ड्राइव नहीं चलता है टू अवॉइड दैट ऑलवेज मूव लोकल फाइल्स टू वन ड्राइव दैट्स ऑल लाइफ विल बी गुड नाउ द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज दिस इज माई एफिशिएंसी अभी टीम में क्या होता है टीम वर्क में क्या होता है टीम वर्क में क्या होता है टिपिकल टीम वर्क मीन्स वॉट ऐसा एम्पॉरिंग पिक्चर दिखाना ईजी है बट एक्चुअली क्या होता है चलो एग्जाम्पल नया प्रोजेक्ट है पंद्रह जन का टीम है थ्री मंथ्स प्रोजेक्ट मल्टीपल लोकेशन डिफरेंट डिपार्टमेंट्स ऑल ऑफ देम हैव टू वर्क ऑन अ कॉमन प्रोजेक्ट तो अब ये कैसे करते हैं हम सो फिफ्टीन परसेंट टीम नाउ आई एम नॉट मीटिंग एवरी वन एवरी डे बट वी हैव टू हैव सम कोऑर्डिनेशन बिकॉज माई वर्क डिपेंड्स on others and vice versa so everyone has to be in sync i have to tell them what they are doing they have to tell me what they are doing so i send mara kaise bhejega kitna log dalega mail mein kisi mein kitne jan ha khud ko kyun mail bhej rahe ho yaar chauda dalega na नहीं कुछ लोग खुद को मेल भेजते हैं यू डोंट नो नोट्स टू सेल्फ एक्चुअली दैट इज देयर मैनेजिंग टास्क यस नेवर माइंड मिस यूज इज वेरी इजी टू डू सो बाकी चौदह लोग क्या कर रहे हैं वो भी बाकी चौदह लोगों को एक दिन हो गया तीन महीने का प्रोजेक्ट है सेवनटीन वर्किंग डेज कितने मेला है बोलो नंबर बोलो मैच भी नहीं आता है मोबाइल को हाथ नहीं लगाने का वैसे ही बोलो विल टेल मी द आंसर क्विकली अराउंड नहीं एक्चुअल आंसर जो है द करेक्ट आंसर इज इक्वल टू द करेक्ट आंसर इज इक्वल टू स्पेस बार दिस कॉल्ड वन नोट ऑल ऑफ यू हैव इट बट वेन आज कितने लोग यूज करता है वन पर्सन यूज इज इट दैट्स वाई माइक्रोसॉफ्ट चूज द ब्रांड नेम वन नॉट बिकॉज एक ही जन यूज कर रहा है प्लीज यूज इट इट्स एन अमेजिंग प्रोडक्ट सो दिस इज अ बिल्ट इन कैलकुलेटर सो डोंट गेट इम्प्रेस विद द कैलकुलेटर गेट डिप्रेस्ड दैट ये लोग एक दूसरे के साथ कम्युनिकेट करने के लिए कितने मेल भेजे इस दूसरे को दिस इज सपोज टू कीप एवरी वन इन सिंक कौन से एंगल से सिंक में हो मैं 
Now, will I get only these many mails? No. This way, just to kya kar raha hai, main kya kar raha hai. Files bhi hoga na, project ka. Uska aur CC jata hai. Minutes of meeting, chalo aur CC bhe ja. Task list bhi, koi problem ni. Excel mein bana, aur visit. So, ye 9000 to conservative hai. Jaya ka hai, ye sab jaya ka raha hai gande ki. Biggest dumping ground in the world. Aur koi, जाना पड़ता है मजबूरी में चलो गया मैं आई एम अ पार्ट ऑफ फाइव प्रोजेक्ट्स बाय द वे एंड क्विकली आई वांट टू नो क्या हो रहा है ये प्रोजेक्ट में तो द ओनली थिंग आई कैन डू इज सर्च इन इनबॉक्स विद प्रोजेक्ट नेम अनफॉर्चूनेटली सर्च भी कैसे करने का आता नहीं ढंग से सो फर्स्ट लेट मी टेल यू हाउ टू डू सर्च दिस अ क्लासिक एग्जांपल ऑफ हाउ द फर्स्ट थॉट इज रॉन्ग If I ask you how how to do search in Outlook, सब लोग बोलेगा इधर जाने का और टाइप करने का दैट इज द वर्स्ट वे ऑफ सर्चिंग पहले देखने का क्या देखने का क्या देखने का कैन यू टेल मी अ बेटर वे ऑफ सर्चिंग एक मिनट लेट मी एडजस्ट इट प्रॉपरली सो नोटिस ये हम इसको बोलते हैं मेनू राइट टैब बोलते हैं एक्चुअली फाइल होम सेंड रिसीव फोल्डर व्यू हेल्प ये छोड़ो इस पर कोई क्लिक नहीं करता है हम कोई मालूम नहीं हम क्या कर रहे हैं एनी वे लास्ट मेनू कौन है हेल्प नाउ नोटिस वेरी केयरफुली एन आई क्लिक इन साइड सर्च बॉक्स और एक बेचारा मेनू आता है बट सर्च जिसको हम कभी देखते नहीं हैं इधर हमको मालूम है ना क्या सर्च करने का उधर क्यों जाने का तो माइक्रोसॉफ्ट अक्कल नहीं है उसको तो पहले वो पूछ रहा है सर कहाँ सर्च कर रहे हो वो तो बताओ बाय डिफॉल्ट इट इज करंट मेल बॉक्स दैट्स व्हाई टू मेनी रिजल्ट्स कम एंड इम्प्लिसिटली मोस्ट प्रोबेबली यू आर सर्चिंग ओनली इन बॉक्स तो फर्स्ट डिफाइन द स्कोप द स्कोप मीन्स वॉट करंट फोल्डर बोलो ठीक है फिर भी टाइप नहीं करने का दिस इज द टेम्पटेशन ऑफ टाइपिंग द सर्च वर्ड पहले सोचो वो सब्जेक्ट में था क्या सब्जेक्ट में था तो सब्जेक्ट पे क्लिक करो अभी मालूम है सब्जेक्ट में नहीं था बॉडी टेक्स में था तो क्या करने का इधर ऑप्शन ही नहीं है बॉडी टेक्स का तो क्या करने का टू ऑप्शन गिव अप और एक्सप्लोर गिव अप इज इजी यू आर डूइंग इट फॉर ट्वेंटी ईयर्स एक्सप्लोर मीन्स वॉट Have the courage to notice a button called more. Normally, our brain says more means more trouble. उधर जाना नहीं. More means more benefits. When you click on it, you ask for more. So don't get scared. ये बहुत ही लंबा list आएगा. डरने का नहीं, escape नहीं दबाने का. पूरा पढ़ने का. This is called body. Now ये पढ़ा ठीक है. Scroll bar को scroll करना पड़ता है. अभी आया यह गलती से सब देख लो ना एक बार देन अक्कल आया अरे अटैचमेंट में भी डायरेक्टली ढूंढ सकते हैं अंडरस्टैंड अंडरस्टैंड द नीड्स फ्रॉम सोल्यूशन दैट इज कॉल्ड रिवर्स लर्निंग दैट इज द बेस्ट वे टू लर्न ऑफिस सो नाउ इफ आई ओनली वॉन्ट टू सर्च इन अटैचमेंट वॉट आई डू अटैचमेंट कंटेंट बोलेगा अभी इधर डाल लेगा उसको ना आई विल गिव यू मोर प्रिसाइज रिजल्ट यू मे नॉट रिमेंबर वेन यू एग्जैक्टली अबाउट द मेल बट कुछ तो याद है बराबर उसमें अटैचमेंट था क्या कुछ याद है अभी इसमें से कुछ भी याद नहीं है तो सर्च क्या कर रहा है तो टोटल बॉटम लाइन दिस इज द वे टू सर्च नाउ हैविंग सेट दैट इवन इफ यू यूज द मोस्ट सोफिस्टिकेटेड सर्च वो बराबर करेगा तो भी नौ हजार रिजल्ट आएगा वट इज द पॉइंट अंडरस्टैंड सो वट इज द रूट कॉज रूट कॉज इज हाउ मेनी प्रोजेक्ट्स आर देर बट हाउ मेनी प्लेसेस आर देर एंड दैट इज द वर्स्ट पॉसिबल प्लेस सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वेन टू यूज ई मेल ई मेल इज यूज फॉर एड ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन उसमें भी दो टाइप आता है
अर्जेंट कुछ चाहिए तो मेल भेजेगा क्या नहीं ना जाके मुंडी पकड़ेगा अगर दूर है तो फोन करेगा चैट करेगा कुछ तो करेगा ना मेल में तो इम्प्लिसिट डिले है तो स्लो चलेगा तो मेल भेजने का पास चाहिए तो चैट करने का और आर्ग्यूमेंट से तो एडॉक ये ठीक है बट प्रोजेक्ट इज नॉट एडॉक नो इट्स फोकस्ड कम्युनिकेशन विद अ कॉमन गोल इन माइंड सो फॉर प्रोजेक्ट्स यू शुड नॉट यूज ईमेल तो वी ऑफ कोर्स नीड समथिंग टू कम्युनिकेट विथ ये आई नो दैट सॉरी but that place cannot be in box so what is that one place there is an app called teams if you have office 365 you will have it so make sure you install teams on laptop as well as mobile it wale ko bolo dono chahiye it wale ko bhi teams nahi malum hoga usko bhi sikhao barabar main video de raha hu barabar hai wo video ka fayda kya hai koi dekhta nahi mera video baad mein i know but uska ek benefit hai maybe you never go back to the video But when you go back to your office, which will be tomorrow, what is going to happen? You will see someone dragging formulas for twenty minutes, <laughs> or randomly putting a search word in search box. ऐसा गंदगी अभी दिखने लगेगा। और पहले हम भी करते थे, but अभी हमको फर्क समझता है। तो अभी फर्क समझता है, तो वो you can't tolerate inefficiency. <laughs> बिकॉज यू नो देर इज अ बेटर वे तो सामने वाले को सिखाएगा कि नहीं सिखाएगा वाला फ्रेंड है कि एनिमी है ठीक है बट एनिमी भी है वो ट्रैक कर रहा है उसने टेबल नहीं यूज किया तो तुम्हारा एफर्ट बढ़ गया ना टेबल डालने का बराबर बिकॉज इफ पीपल अराउंड यू आर नॉट एफिशियंट देर इन एफिशियंसी विल Amplify your efficient inefficiency, even if you are efficient in pockets. In teamwork, one person's efficiency dilutes, gets diluted by other people's inefficiency. So whether you like it or not, you have to make other people efficient. Now two options: you teach them, you do a mini version like this, which is the best, because when you teach, you learn better. But if you don't have time, share that video with them, including external parties. This is very important. Whether it is a link being sent or a Teams project, there will be external parties involved. So external party को CC with attachment नहीं भेजने का, उसको भी link भेजने का. Many IT people block that. उनको video दिखाओ, बोले block मत करो. Internal sharing efficient हो गया, external sharing inefficient रह गया. What is the point? If you send a link outside, if outside party is misusing it, you will know. That they forwarded that to some competitor. आज नहीं समझता है. And because the file is not going anywhere, you will also get an audit trail कि बाहर वाला बंदा भी कब आके file touch किया. File में edit किया किया वो नहीं समझेगा. उसके लिए track changes हो, whatever the tool is. But at least usage तो समझेगा. समझ रहा है? बहुत बार लोग बोलते हैं हाँ file मिल गया लेकिन काम नहीं कर रहा है. File खोला कि नहीं कैसे समझता है? इधर समझेगा date time के साथ. so external sharing should never be blocked anyway so what is teams so teams is serving two purpose one is ad hoc work ad hoc work of which category fast category ad hoc work slow category outlook and then project specific work so simple is ad hoc so i will show you Now all of you use some kind of chat, correct? Whichever chat you use, many of you must be using WhatsApp also. WhatsApp is not supposed to be used for corporate, but everyone uses it, whether you like it or not. Now let's say I'm using WhatsApp. How many of you use Skype? A lot of people. So there's a choice of Skype versus WhatsApp. Now I'm saying stop using both of them for corporate use. Start using this chat. Why? Multiple reasons. Now, if you use WhatsApp, at least the chat remains in one place. Chat with one person, correct? In Skype, what happens? The chat history goes into Outlook as conversation history. 
If I chat with him 20 times, there will be 20 items there. This is almost impossible to refer backwards. Now, if you had CHN me a file 6 months back, there is no way to go back. When the chat window closes, it's gone. That second problem. Now, third problem. Now, notice what happens here. I have these recent chats. I may have chatted with 100 people. I don't remember if I have chatted with someone. I go to chat. Right? I type the name of the person. Right now, the chat is empty. When I click on it, it will find Purana chat and it will append to that. So this is better than Skype. Ek hi chat instance rega per person. Dunia bar ka ek hi chat hai. That's number one. Second, I am putting an attachment. Theek hai. I am uploading a local local file. Jo bhi ek file hai. Okay, I uploaded the file. Where is this being uploaded? In chat. When I upload it, of course, this chat is always available to me. So. This file will be available in the chat. But notice, this is something nobody has. This is my chat. What is next to it? WhatsApp many of us easily. It's me, all the files are available. Now, where did this file go? It went to my OneDrive. So, all the benefits of OneDrive it gets. Now, that person also may share a file goes to that person's one drive i will get access to it and vice versa now i want to add someone if i want to add someone i can add someone also if i want to add someone it may even ask you a question now one more thing this is like individual chat suppose ke saath chat karo. now yes i have already chatted with now I put one name. Now I want to add one more person. So I'll say new chat. ZS I have already chatted with. And I want to add a chat with ZS and boss. Now in WhatsApp, what will I do? Create a group. Suppose I have created this group six months back. And today I don't remember it. I create a new group. Will WhatsApp tell me a membership of group already? Hai? It found my past chat with them and it is appending to it. And this group chat itself has its own files area. This may be our kuch karna hai to plus sign hai. This may be our hai Excel dalo, OneNote dalo, PowerPoint dalo, videos dalo, website dalo. So this ad hoc also is a sort of structured area. Understood? Now many of us like WhatsApp because of emoticons. So all the emoticons are here. All the GIF animations are here. And more importantly, there are Customizable memes. Memes to what they customizable name that. Customizable means what? Because okay, so even from that point of view, this is better. And everything is of course searchable. Now there's one more brilliant feature, which is not specific to chat, but it's a very popular feature. What do you do? You go to that new chat over on anybody's name and you get to see something brilliant. So I go and put someone's name over on that person's name, you will have a tab called organization or you'll see an icon like an org chart. Then what do you see? That person's entire org chart you will see. So this is the current person. He was ka boss, he was ka boss, he was ka boss. This guy is subordinate, a subordinate, a subordinate. This pick click karega, to uska hierarchy dikega. It's a navigable, complete org chart of the entire organization. Out of the box. 
we do see similar information in Outlook, but it's not laid out like an org chart. So this is a very popular feature. Now, once I hover on someone, what can I do? I can chat, I can send email, do an audio call, do a video call from there itself. So in large organizations, you may want to find people by hierarchy because you don't know the name. This is the best way. So that takes care of the chat part. Now let's come to the project part. So this is ad hoc work. This replaces Skype, replaces all other chat software for official work. Now many of the companies, if you have an email, you may delete the email, but IT stores it for whatever, three years, seven years, depending on what is the regulation, right? This chat is also stored for those many years. So if there's a dispute, this is legal evidence. This is GDPR compliant. If there is a litigation going on, you can put a litigation hold on that. So everything related to records management happens automatically. Although it is just a chat. Now, chat is one part, but now if I have a project, I don't want to go to inbox at all. So what do I do when I have a project? When I have a new project, I go to Teams, not to chat, Teams. And this is one project, second project like that. I can have many projects going on. New project, I go to new team. Join or create a team. Create a team. Build from scratch. There can be templates also. Private team because only by invitation you know who are the members. So, give it a name. This is anybody doing it. No, no need to go to IT. Now, I don't know what is nice about it, but it says nice work. Now, you put the names of people. You can put external people as well. If there are vendors. Now, all of, all of them become members. You can make them owners also if you like. So what happens? These people are getting becoming members. Now, there are two categories. What is the difference? Owner can add more people, members can't add. Now, boss kuch karne wala nahi hai. Again, it's a good best practice to make boss owner. Okay. Now, here is the deal. Suppose I want to send a daily update to my team. You have to make sure everyone in your team has installed this. Where? On their desktop and on their mobile. You have to teach them the benefits of using Teams vis a -vis inbox. You have to convince them only then it will work. So now what happens? So now I want to send a daily update. Earlier I would have gone to inbox, sent a mail with 14 people in CC. Now what am I doing? I am going to this. What is this called? Conversation. Daily update. Okay, very good. This is eliminating CC to 14 people. Nothing goes to their inbox, nothing goes to your sent items. Now if nobody wants to respond, nobody wants to respond. Doesn't matter. Now I want to ask a question. What will I do? Ask a question, CC to 14 people. Same thing. Agreed? Now I, this is like sending CC to 14 people. Now this is also a question, but this question I want to put 13 people in CC, boss in 2, because budget say boss ko mahal hai. This may 2 CC hai nahi, at the red one. So this is like mentioning boss, so boss ko ek alag notification hai ga, ye koi kuch pooch raha hai. Normally ye jo cheez hai, uska notification nahi hai ga. Chahiye to enable kar sakte ho, but don't, interruption jada nahi rakna hai. Now, so far clear, nothing is going to inbox, life is good. Now if someone wants to respond to it on mobile, they can do that also. This is my mobile, this is my Teams app, 
which is where yeah and exactly same thing which i'm seeing here will be available there now notifications can be configured separately on mobile and desktop depends on what you want to do there you are anyway now i showed you two things i showed you chat and i showed you a team in chat also i could have added those 14 people correct i did not do that chat is ad hoc this is project specific so we created a separate team and what i am typing there still looks like chat only so the difference is very important to understand so this is my mobile i have this v school demo here in v school we have this and i have same thing here easy now i'll show again this is chat whatever this is i'll go to another one this is chat right and this is teams conversation what is the difference both look like chat only suppose this was whatsapp someone has asked two questions i am answering the first question where should i type the answer there is only one place for the chat text box so whether i am answering the first question or second question i can only type here in a chat or i am asking a third question that is the difference So if I am replying to this question, I don't type here. I reply here. Understand? If boss is answering this question, boss will reply here. And then if I want to reply to that, whatever it is. <laughs> Now this, if I don't like, I can say "marne dos." Now this is separate. This is called discussion. That was called chat. There is a difference. Unless you don't understand the difference, people will reply here. New discussion thread means this. Reply means this. Make sense? Okay. So that's that. So bottom line, what has happened? The communication part is nothing is going to. everything is happening in teams at least some part of life has become better now files i spent half an hour to tell you files ka standard operating procedure kya hai naya file banaya to one drive pe dal diya that is wrong why because if i am creating a new file for this project and i put it on one drive How many people can see the file? One. That's why it's called one drive. So, four or five or whatever name you have, I will add one more. So now I don't want to store a project-specific file to one drive. Where should I store it? Not in anybody's one drive. Team will call it and call it. So when you create a project, it also gets a file tab. Now when we did a chat, that also gets a file tab. Now there is a difference. Of course, दोनों में file डाल सकते हैं. There is a difference. When I put a file here, it goes into the one drive of whoever uploaded. <coughs> Now, when we created this team called V School, what happened? It created something called general. उसके अंदर हम conversation कर रहे हैं, files देख रहे हैं. Why is this? This is general area for discussing this project discussion about another project i will go to that project and do there now each project may have different aspects so isme suppose we are doing some new product launch so in this case there is no general discussion i want to do some i want to create some collaterals for the launch that's a specific kind of discussion 
so I create a separate what channel for that then we are going to have an event for launch so for event management there is another channel what am I doing I am segregating the communication and discussion within the project otherwise ye ek mini inbox hota tha. now what does that mean everyone can see all the discussions but I will go to the correct area and discuss that's all understand now I may be actually working in event management I may not want to see everything which is happening here but event management everything is happening I want to be notified so if you want to be notified you say follow this channel so anything happens there you will get a notification so you can refine how frequently you are notified okay now each one of them have separate area for conversation separate area for files so now I create a new file new file karega kya karega so a new file I will just put some random data there don't worry how I am doing it some of you will understand now I want to save this file to where not to OneDrive I want to store it to teams which team that particular which school demo project problem kya hai idhar to jana hi nahi hai zindagi mein idhar bhi jana nahi hogi to jaye kaha so remember sites means teams let's remember that for those who understand technical stuff why sites means teams is only for IT guys when you create a team it behind the scenes creates a SharePoint site that's why never mind so you go to sites where did I create the team in a separate app called teams where am I in Excel that automatically appears here now I choose the correct project and I store the file unfortunately this is not going to work error error what is the best practice escape the one so what is it saying it's saying you can't store here why I just created the team why can't I store here all right here here वापस गंदगी मत करो अभी स्ट्रक्चर बनाया ना वो कौन से मैं बिलोंग करता है वो बोलो नहीं करता है तो जनरल में डालो ठीक है पर हवा में नहीं रखने का सो दैट इज द आईडिया व्हेन यू क्रिएट अ प्रोजेक्ट क्रिएट मल्टीपल चैनल्स इट्स बेटर टू हैव सम चैनल्स ऑन यूज देन हैव अ डंपिंग ग्राउंड कॉल्ड जनरल चैनल नाउ व्हाट इज हैपनिंग दिस फाइल इज गोइंग टू टीम्स टीम्स को अलग स्टोरेज है मेरा वन ड्राइव से कुछ नहीं गया ऑटोमेटिकली ऑल पीपल कैन सी इट they can see it on mobile, they can edit it all the benefits of OneDrive are still there plus benefits of Teams do you get the idea? so now what has happened? again coming back to our thing this is happening in Teams life is good now task list pehle karte hai. I told you this has to be a shared task list so what is the product I told you in the beginning? it's called not task list that is personal planner <laughs> remember the product so how do you add a project plan that is the next question so collaterals mein bahut sara kaam karna hai so the most important button is this what did we just create he created a container for managing that project by default it is allowing you to manage communication and files but project may or bhi cheez hota hai jo bhi cheez chahiye isi jaga pe dao kya chahiye idhar likha hai so this plus sign gives you ability to add all kinds of things here this the upper section there are two sections there is upper section and there is a lower section the upper section mostly are microsoft products the lower section are third party products so you use survey monkey you can add it here you use trello add it here you use mailchimp add it here you use jira add it here so it connects to 100 plus third party products as well 
जो भी चाहिए प्रोजेक्ट के लिए इधर डाल देता है एक जगह पे जाने डाल दैट इज द आइडिया सो इन दिस केस आई वॉन्ट अ शेयर्ड टास्क लिस्ट विच इज कॉल्ड प्लान आई क्रिएट अ न्यू प्लान उसमें टास्क डालो दो टास्क कैन बी सीन बाई एवरी वन ऑन मोबाइल when they update it as complete everyone will know it is complete or it done no excel file floating around so now when you go to a real task list to save time i'll show you a task list which already is populated in the task list you can have categories also these are buckets of tasks to do approval as legal whatever you want so task dala sabko dikhta hai update kiya sabko dikhta hai bravo Now, typically, task में क्या चल रहा है देखने के लिए तो हम मीटिंग में टाइम वेस्ट करते हैं ना बराबर अभी ये बॉस को भी डालो उसमें उसको बोलेगा क्या चल रहा है इधर जाके क्लिक कर ये ये चल रहा है मीटिंग एलिमिनेटेड बराबर लाइव रिव्यू बॉस को भी अच्छा है कुछ नहीं खाने सो वट इज दिस शोइंग यू बाय टास्क प्रोग्रेस बाय कैटेगरी and by bus simple and effective now this is done now what is this this is a task list this is group by bucket now do you understand what is kanban board or agile i want to recategorize this as not started in progress so theek hai wo sab kar diya chalo by progress bolo so this is a kanban board now in progress completed Not started. So in the meeting you decide किस को करना है इधर से इधर ट्रैक करो खत्म तो स्टेटस चेंज हो गया समझ So life is good. Now having done that, there is a complication which will come. As you may you start using it. अभी तो डेमो है वॉट विल हैपन ईच प्रोजेक्ट विल हैव एटलीस्ट वन टास्क लिस्ट इफ नॉट मोर करेक्ट नाउ इन ईच टास्क लिस्ट ऑल द टास्क आर नॉट फॉर यू So now, if I want to know, मुझे क्या करना है across projects, I'll have to go to each project, each channel. उसमें देखना है task list है क्या? उसमें filter it on my name, and then cumulative ऐसा कुछ तो copy paste. Even the thought is inefficient. Right? Obviously, they have thought of it. So this is to see this project का इस channel का task में क्या हो रहा है. But when I want to see my work pending for projects. I am not going to go to each project. So this is the main menu: activity, chat, teams, meetings, calls, files. What is files? Show you files across projects in a single place. Now, when you don't know something, we right click, correct? But ये modern application है. Modern means mobile के लिए बना है. Mobile पे mouse नहीं होता है. तो click भी नहीं होता है. Right click भी नहीं होता है. So three dot means right click. Remember. तो इधर भी एक प्लानर आता है ये प्लानर में क्या होता है तो ऑल योर टास्क पोल्ड अक्रॉस प्रोजेक्ट्स ऑन द प्लेटर यहां मिलेगा तो प्लानर बोल के मोबाइल ऐप भी आता है यू कैन एक्चुअली सी ऑल योर टास्क टुगेदर नाउ जस्ट टू कंप्लीट द पिक्चर यू रिमेंबर अपना पर्सनल टास्क कहां डाल रहे हो मेरा काम आउटलुक टास्क में है मेरा प्रोजेक्ट स्पेसिफिक काम प्लानर में है मीन्स टीम्स में है एंड अक्रॉस टीम्स मुझे एक माय टास्क दिख रहा है नाउ नोट इज वट आई एम डूइंग आई एम गोइंग टू दिस गाय कॉल टू डू वॉट इज दिस माय टास्क कमिंग फ्रॉम आउटलुक अभी ये और एक है ये भी इसको क्या बोलते हैं इसको बोलते हैं एलिप्सिस ये खड़ा हुआ एलिप्सिस है ओरिजेंटल होगा तो सोया हुआ एलिप्सिस है इसको बोलते हैं बर्गर तीन लेयर है और एक चौथा है जस्ट टू कंप्लीट द टर्मिनोलॉजी ऐसा कुछ दिखेगा ये डेकोरेशन नहीं है इसको वॉफल बोलते हैं ये भी मेन्यू है कोई भी डॉट और लाइन दिखेगा तो डेकोरेशन नहीं है मेन्यू है तो एनी वे इसमें क्या आता है मेरा टास्क आएगा फिर यही क्या हो रहा है लाइनर का भी अक्रॉस प्रोजेक्ट टास्क उधर ही दिख रहा है डू यू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ तो so, क्या हो रहा है जिंदगी में अभी टास्क के लिए अभी प्लानर में जाएगा एंड प्लानर कहाँ जाएगा टीम्स में जाएगा 
so life is good and the last one is minutes of meeting now minutes of meeting hum kaha lete hain whether project specific hai ya random meeting hai meeting ka notes kaha lete hain normally to lete hi nahi hai but theek hai agar important meeting hai to lena padta hai where do you take meeting notes normally paper pe lete hain aur hmm डायरी में लेते हैं या अगर लैपटॉप लेके गए तो वर्ड में लेते हैं ऐसा भी गारंटी नहीं कोई एक्सेल में भी नोट्स लेता होगा हंड्रेड परसेंट एक्सेल में रेज्यू में भी आता है मेरे द बेस्ट टूल टू क्रिएट रेज्यूम इज नॉट वर्ड इट इज पावर पॉइंट रिमेम्बर यू कैन क्रिएट अ वर्ड वन बिकॉज इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड बट द बेस्ट वे टू सेल योर सेल्फ इज थ्रू पावर पॉइंट no mind few things in powerpoint i'll show finish this note taking few things in powerpoint then summary and finish okay ye yeah, hang ho gaya lagta no mind so bottom line when we go to minute meeting notes are taken on paper or in word excel something theek hai obviously kahi to notes pada hai the question is Okay, let me change the question. जब जरूरत पड़ता है नहीं मिलता है तो क्यों एफर्ट लेने का स्टॉप टेकिंग नोट्स और वट शुड यू आइडियली वॉन्ट मीटिंग है ना मीटिंग तो कैलेंडर में रहता है ना राइट तो क्या करना चाहिए आइडियली अगर होता है तो अच्छा है ना अच्छा है कि नहीं अब कैसा करने का आउटलुक कैलेंडर जस्ट एड न्यू मीटिंग रिक्वेस्ट जस्ट डेमो पर्पज ओके आ गया मेरा मीटिंग सो मीटिंग में नॉर्मली क्या होता है देर बी अटेंडीज देर बी सम एजेंडा को लेटरल्स वेयर द मीटिंग इज ऑल दैट बराबर वॉट इज दिस रूम कॉल ठीक है कैलेंडर में क्यों जा रहा है जो भी है ना मीटिंग है मीटिंग का नोट्स कहाँ लेते हैं पेपर पे लेते हैं लैपटॉप पे लेते हैं ऐसे ऐसे फॉर द मोमेंट की लैपटॉप है अपने पास मे बी इवन इफ यू हैव द लैपटॉप यू मे नॉट कैरी इट फॉर ऑल मीटिंग्स बट फॉर द टाइम बी एज यू लैपटॉप है वॉट इज माई नीड आई वॉन्ट टू लिंक मीटिंग टू नोट्स I don't know how to do it. So, what is the method to find out? Right click. वो पूछेगा. खुद के लिए लेना है कि share करना है. पहले खुद तो करें ढंग से. So, now it will ask you कहाँ डालूँगा notes. So, these are one note notebooks. When you start one note for the first time, go to your desktop and start one note do a favor to yourself you create one notebook <coughs> don't use that notebook it's not called one note because you have to use one notebook you create many notebooks file new create new notebooks in one drive how many notebooks depends on your work profile many notebooks so you will write ye meeting kaun se notebook mein dal so notebook kya hota hai This is a notebook. Your notebook का नाम है It's like an organizer diary. These are topics. These are what sections. You can make any number of sections. Each sections can have any number of pages. So basically, 
we have unlimited supply of organized diaries to create as many as you want. Now you put a card on. So I choose some relevant notebook and the relevant section. And then say okay. Now we, if it was a diary, it is a blank page. If it's Word, it's a blank page. If it's Excel, it's a blank page. ये क्या करता है? Blank page नहीं देता है. पूरा meeting का detail इधर देना. अभी एक ही बंदा है, but you can actually tick mark and say कौन आया, कौन नहीं आया. And then it says, take your notes here. Long meeting. What does that mean? You will have a long recording, correct? Right? So in this case, I have twenty minute recording. Real life में तीन घंटे का होगा. But everything is recorded. So I have not written a lot of notes. Now I can always play the recording back. Remember. So now I have written few notes. I have written some notes. So these are this is the recording audio, and these are my notes. What is the benefit? If there is a dispute, suppose there is a team's pilot who is being disputed. Someone said, "Man, I have not said anything. I have the audio, no? I can play it back." Problem? What is it? These three hours are notes. Hai. Audio is mine. I have three hours. Ka. Exactly where is the audio? Mein, when this topic was being discussed, that is the problem. So what will happen now? If I say, "Play it," shut down, everyone. Otherwise, that is a compliance issue. Now it is starting to play from beginning. And now I am. The whole boring meeting, three hours. Who will listen? हमको क्या चाहिए ये प्ले बटन नॉट वेरी यूजफुल हमको क्या चाहिए जहाँ टीम्स पायलट लिखा है उस जगह पे जाना है ऑडियो में विदाउट फास्ट फॉरवर्ड रिवाइंड तो प्ले बटन कहाँ चाहिए इन दिस केस टीम्स पायलट पे चाहिए बट इन रियल लाइफ तुमको मालूम है क्या डिस्प्यूट कब होने वाला है सो टेक्निकली एनी ऑफ दैन कैन बी डिस्प्यूट सो किधर प्ले बटन चाहिए I can't predict dispute कब होगा ना तो प्ले बटन कहाँ चाहिए जहाँ भी मैंने लिखा है वहाँ चाहिए ना तो वो ऑटोमेटिकली होता है तो नोटिस वेन आई क्लिक ऑन दिस प्ले बटन और दिस और दिस वट एवर द प्ले बटन इज वट इज इट डूइंग इट फाइंड दैट पॉइंट इन द ऑडियो सिक्स मिनट्स ट्वेंटी सेवन वहाँ से करेगा आई गो सम वेरी डाउन And click play. It will go to that point in time. Twelve minutes thirty-five seconds. You just have to click on record and click on stop. Automatic bookmarking with notes. Make sense? So that is how you use notes and one note. So now coming back to Teams to complete the topic. When I create a project, obviously I need a one note notebook for that project. That notebook should be automatically shared with the team members. So what do we do? Go to the channel, click on this. Either one note done it. Now that one note is available in Teams. You can also locally sync it. Use it on mobile. Everyone can see notes. No more CCs and attachment. This is one note done. So bottom line, what's going on? What were we doing in one note for meeting? Sorry, for project. What did we do? Everything now happens in everything related to project now happens in Teams plus more because there is a plus button. So team is one place for project management. The only thing it will not do is link tasks. For that, you require Microsoft Projects or a formal project management tool. Where one task getting delayed, other task should automatically get delayed. No planner may not work. They are independent tasks. Okay, so that is about teamwork. Have you understood? In all this, not a single mail went to inbox. And when I go to Teams, I can see all my projects in one place without search. These are the projects. I am a part of. Which bold means what? Other hundred items, like inbox. 
So ad hoc work here, project specific work here. Now if you have teams meetings, you can also arrange meetings from here. This has a very nice feature, let me show you. You can use audio video as well. I am just arranging a meeting. I can choose which project this meeting is for. So I am saying we school demo Jadda. Okay. The meeting is scheduled there. Now when you participate in the meeting, do you do audio video calls as well? Video calls. So video calls may kya hota hai bahut bar? You are sitting at home, some cyber cafe outside party. You don't want people to know where you are sitting. This is a very nice feature, so I'll show it to you. So what happens in our team meeting? Once you connect, notice it's allowing me to do audio as well as video. So I'm meeting now. I have to be on a video call. I don't want to tell people where I'm sitting. So we have a nice option here, which is currently disabled. I don't know why. Okay, let me try again. So for some reason it is hard. Now see, this is, sorry. This is without blur. This is with blur. Mere ko bhi nahi blur karega, to fayda kya This is a live example of artificial intelligence. Those who understand IT, the tool being used behind the scenes is called Azure Cognitive Services. So if I move, it dynamically is blurring. If I put an inanimate object, it will blur it. If I put my hand, it will not blur it. If another person passes by, far away, it will be blurred. If someone participates in the meeting, same field of view, it will not get blurred. So it's very intelligent. Now many times, we record meetings. So you can record the meeting also. You can share screen, all that is still available. If you are using Skype for this, try Teams, you will never go back to Skype. With the same bandwidth, the audio, video, screen sharing is amazingly better. Exactly same thing available on mobile as well. So I am doing some screen sharing. Meeting recording is going on. When the meeting is finished, I will say stop recording. Okay. Now when the recording is finished, where is the recording going to appear? It will automatically appear in the same team, in the same channel. So those who didn't attend the meeting will see the recording. It's a video. Where will be the video automatically put? In screen. I told you screen is the best place. Other jaake ek bar English bol do. The meeting ka transcript will also come automatically. Are you getting the concept? Good. So bottom line, all these things are designed to make us more efficient. Few examples in PowerPoint and then we'll finish. Now one of the things in PowerPoint is what is the objective of PowerPoint? Objective is what is the objective? 10 more minutes we finish. What is the objective of PowerPoint to put forward our point with power? Or fear we go slide ganda hai dikta hai. Abhi suppose I have five photos. Aisa random bada bada photos hai. So as earlier we link her. Now I want to arrange them. Usme 20 minutes jayega mera. Usko pagar bhi mila. Lekin fear we go slide ganda dikhe. So what do you do? You go to design tab. Like Excel had ideas. This guy also has ideas. So machine learning is applied. And it will think, what is the best way of arranging these guys? And it will try to do it. Come on, man. 
इसको इंटरनेट लगता है आई थिंक माई इंटरनेट डाइड बिकॉज दैट मशीन लर्निंग थिंग इज सेटिंग ऑन द क्लाउड एनी वे वॉट इट डज इज दिस विल गिव यू सेवन और एट ऑप्शन ऑफकोर्स यू कैन मॉडिफाई दिस अनदर थिंग इट डज मेनी टाइम्स वी हैव अ सिंपल बुलेटेड लिस्ट नेवर शो अ बुलेटेड लिस्ट बिकॉज पीपल फॉल अ स्लीप right the purpose of powerpoint is to keep the audience awake and manipulate them to get what you want so again design ideas what will it do i hope i have that other one i have the other one notice i have this i can make a smart art but usme bhi effort jata hai so i go to design ideas notice what it did it actually created a nice timeline now what is written idea testing launch एक और वेरिएशन दिया उसने ये तो एक टाइमलाइन है दूसरा उसने क्या किया देखो इट फाउंड द करेक्ट आइकन एज वेल दिस इज कॉल्ड मशीन लर्निंग इन एक्शन तो स्टार्ट यूजिंग डिजाइन आइडियाज लाइफ विल बी बेटर लेस एफर्ट मोर इम्पैक्ट ओके चलो समरी एंड खत्म ओ so it is a two step process simple how do you detect inefficiency anything repetitive you understand hands was this brain or in general if you are struggling that means inefficient and how do you find the best way local problem right click karna hai global problem means menu on the top that's all the most important thing is you have 12000 buttons which are solutions to your needs you have to discover your needs behind those 12000 buttons if you count all the features there are 12000 features we misuse 150 of them that is called inefficiency so to cut a very long story short <coughs> so we saw how to create stuff how to work together how to work faster how to analyze for all of them there are products available this transition is called curtain by the way is there for 12 years <laughs> all this put together is called office 365 most of you probably have it and if you use it well you will grow faster That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.